Happy Monday. Happy Astros camp day to you, Mr. Pierzynski. How you doing? Yeah, Sun's greened up I got a Hall of Famer going that way. You can't see him, though. Got some guy who went in the Hall of Fame a couple years ago. Is his last name Bagwell or Biggio? It definitely starts with a B in an Agwell. Burke. Chris Burke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Lance Berkman. Lance Berkman. Nope. There you go. Okay. No. It was bad. Um, we're excited to talk to many Astros. What do you got? What do you got? Give us the live report. You can almost see him over that shoulder. I but, like your shot today, I, AJ. I like the background. I yeah, there's a lot of action the happening action. behind me. A lot yeah. of action happening behind me. Um, I like the setup at Astros camp. I've been there quite frequently. The fans can kind of mix in with the scene where, you know, player might pass by. I don't know if that's making any sense, but good access if you're trying to get really up and close with a player or get an autograph or something like that this is the spot so we'll get to many astros guests before we charge the mound um there was a comment that i promised jack on friday i would mention to you aj not that i care but aj ought to ditch the hat he's got good hair i'm jealous just take it for what it is do you have good hair and you're jealous sure it's me but it was jack mundo in the chat oh yeah, I, there was a rare occasion where I actually had my hair done, and so I just didn't have time to throw a hat on, so I ran in hot. <laughs> Hearing AJ say his hair was done makes me laugh. I think it looks Which good. means I combed it and put some product in it. That's what Ooh. done means. That's done. <laughs> you got your hair I mean, did. I had thing, listen, I had a thing with my daughter uh, at school. They have like a bricklaying ceremony for the seniors. My daughter's a senior in high school, so I had to go to that, and they – and then I rushed home to get Josh Donaldson to talk to him. And, uh, yeah, so it was, I came in hot, hot. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Scott had a bricklaying ceremony during basketball the entire his entire career in high school. Oh, thank you. I was like, where are you going with this? I got it. I caught on. Yeah. He, he, he made it there. He landed. Okay, let's charge the damn mound, shall we? Uh, we have news to get to. We'll start with... Mookie Betts now moving to shortstop. Gavin Lux is going to head over to second base. Both of you shaking your head. <laughs> Whoever shakes their head the most. Okay, it's AJ. Gets the start. Go ahead. I, I, I hate this. I hate this move. I, I, I hate it for I hate it for the Dodgers. I hate it for Gavin Lux. I hate it for Mookie Betts. I mean, we saw already when he was out there, he, you know, the hardest position on the field besides catcher to find is a shortstop. And – I mean, to just throw him in there and Dave Roberts feel like it's permanent. I mean, this is the big leagues and they're trying to win a World Series and you're going to have a guy that's, you know, played a handful of games there in his, in his career. Like, I mean, I listen, they either got to – don't they still have Mickey Rojas on this team? I mean, I, I know they don't want to wreck Gavin Lux forever, but, I mean, man, maybe send Gavin Lux, say his knee's not healed and throw him on the IL and get him fixed and then but use Mickey Rojas like they did last year and keep Mookie Betts at second base, but – this is not the answer. And you already saw it pop up in some of the spring games. There's only spring training games. Imagine when the season starts and, and, you know, Yamamoto's out there and he gives up a ground ball he thinks is a double play. And Mookie's like, listen, man, I'm not a shortstop. They don't turn the double play. It leads to runs. It's going to be a problem. Being a big league shortstop is different. There was, I remember there was a couple of Japanese shortstops that came over and the pace of play is completely different. Can Mookie Betts – if there is somebody that can do it, Mookie Betts is the guy. I am not I am not questioning that. I feel bad. You said you felt bad for Mookie. You felt bad for the Dodgers. You felt bad for, for Gavin Lux. I feel bad for Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts is sitting here trying to make a decision. They have a game in nine days. Did I calculate yeah. that right? They have a, game, a big league game that counts towards their 162 in nine days. And they have a guy who is capable of playing shortstop. It's the big difference in why Tim Anderson has a job right now. Because he is a big league shortstop. There is a big, huge difference than a utility guy playing there. And Dave Roberts has been put in this position. Star-studded team. 
and you might have a little bit of a defensive downgrade at a premium position. Yeah, but what if Lux is just a second baseman going forward? Then you just don't have a shortstop. I know you guys are both mentioning Miguel Rojas, just have him there for defense. They're trying to make a move so they can have as much offense in that lineup on a daily basis too. Miguel Rojas is not a starting caliber player in the big leagues at the moment based on his offensive profile. Yeah, Compared you, to that, you have eight other guys to cover him. You have eight other guys yeah, to cover him. I understand. I know. I know. Including even the catcher spot where they can year. slug. What do you say? Guys they, how, how many games did they win with Miguel Rojas at shortstop last year? Man, they were hot during that time. Hot. How about this? I got a, I got an idea. Let's do an option C. Willie Adamas, pay up the prospect capital that you not have. Not happening. Not happening. Not happening right because now. You have you have a big league shortstop. Your answer, and Miguel Rojas. Who is like, your big league shortstop? Miguel Rojas. Yeah, but Willie Adamas can handle the position quite well, and he'll give you twenty five homers. Not Why? Happening. Because you're going to go to them and be like, you don't have a date to prom, and there's one girl left. She is going to ask for the world. You, you, they know they're going to ask for the world from them, and it's. It's not going to happen. You already have a defensive shortstop. You want somebody to play shortstop, or do you want somebody to slug? And they have every single position covered. This is the perfect time to have Miguel Rojas. That's why you have him, to put him in that spot. You can't. You, you, you can't go and get Willie Adamas right now. I'm not saying all-star break. Right. Stuff happens. I'm not saying that. But you watch videos of Mookie playing shortstop. He is capable. It is just he's a capable. huge position. He's capable. You just can't throw him in there and be like, they, they just, I mean, I listen, if anyone could do it, Mookie Betts, but you just can't say, you know, we're going to have Jeremy Pena on later and he's going to, we're going to ask him, but do you think you can just throw a guy on there and say, hey, by the way, go play shortstop in the big leagues? Like, Alex Bregman. Easy. A, the, the, what's the, the hardest position to find and the, one of the most valuable positions to find is a utility guy that can also play shortstop. Right, because shortstop, because you have to have the arm strength, you have to have the footwork, you have to have a combination of so many things. That's why utility guys that can give your shortstop a break every now and then, and say your yep. shortstop goes down for a week, you can have a guy cover for him. is so valuable. Yep. Okay, fine. We'll see what happens. I mean, they have you know a whole week and change left to go before <laughs> their regular season starts, so we'll see what happens. Um, but in addition to Adamus, I'm sure they can make some phone calls. And see if there's anyone else they want to fill the void. I get it. I get it. There's not. Yeah. They have it. I know, but they, you don't they want just, offense. You don't just find an offensive shortstop. So wait, just to just to put a bow on this, you guys both think this should never have even happened. They should have just put Rojas at shortstop, let Mookie play second. If Mickey Rowe is a bat like he was last year, you eventually get a shortstop to put him back on the bench. Or during that whole time, Gavin Lux continues to work through what he's working through. Okay. Fine. Let's get to Joey Votto. Signed very soon after we finished up Friday's show. He is a Toronto Blue Jay, which we knew was going to happen eventually if you followed his baby pick on Twitter. I mean, he's from Canada. This is the destination that people had been calling for for years, actually, AJ, even before this season where he was looking for a job even somewhat desperately, we looked at the past at, at some point, I think even during our show last year and today, should the Reds trade him to the Blue Jays? I mean, Brandon Belt had a bang-up year for Toronto last year, but if Joey can get himself together in some minor league at-bats in Buffalo and get up to the big league club, it would be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. I love how you're like somewhat desperately. No, he was desperately... What was that movie with Madonna desperately seeking Susan? He was desperately speaking a job. I mean, putting all the memes and stuff out there, you know, it's like, uh, I mean, good for Joey. Uh, he wanted to keep playing. He found a place to go, his hometown team, Toronto. Will he help them? I mean, maybe, but I mean, he didn't have a great year last year. I know he was hurt, but, you know, where's there, where the big, big question for me is where is the bats going to come? Uh, first base, they have Vladimir Guerrero. Uh, DH, I mean, they got some guys that can fill in there too. So the question is where and how many of bats can he find and will they use a spot on him? Cause let's not forget this is a minor league deal. He's got to prove himself and there's not a lot of time to do that. So it's going to be interesting. Will you're you, Kratz, you know him better than I do. Will Joey Votto, if the red or if the blue Jays come to him and say, Hey, 
we want to send you to triple a for two weeks well he is he willing to do that in order to come back up i hope not i loved the city of buffalo nobody loves the city of buffalo playing baseball in april that is not a that is not a condition to be conducive for a 40 almost 41 year old first base dh he's probably gonna be dhing he's gonna have to be you know stay loose i i don't I think he will help a club. To me, his value is just being on the team. I think if you're looking for him to hit 14 homers like he did last year, I think you you should have better options if you're a Blue Jay team that wants to contend in the American League East. At DH, I think you should have better options, and they should have gone back with Brandon Belt because he killed it for him last year. Yeah, I mean, he was one of their best bats. He was a top three bat for them. Uh, it would have been Bichette, and it would have been Gabriel Moreno. Oh, wait, no, they traded him. So <laughs> Vladdy was still good. He just wasn't a star I last year. I, I think Bell had, was a better year. The MVP last Bell, year. Bell had a better OPS plus, for sure. I'm, I'm sure. So I mean, was, so was picked Vladdy to win the MVP last year, and they let him down. They let us, he let us down. Gee, he I let us down? down. <laughs> you and the mouse in your pocket? Vladdy... Uh, yeah, I'm on the wrong, Vladdy. Way best, way way better. <laughs> he, he was way a, better. He had, a, he had a plus. Oh, was way better. Less, yeah. yeah, less at bats and stuff though. Let's not forget. I know, I know. I'm just saying, like effectiveness per plate appearance. Brandon Belt was up there, so yeah. it's a cool story. We'll see if Joey can make it back up. I mean, usually when these things happen, an injury happens, underperformance, right? Vogelback's there, so maybe he doesn't hit or. Vogel gets hurt. Pissed. Is he pissed? No, oh. I mean, I'm just saying. He's got to be. Votto comes in on the same deal that he's got. Ugh. All of a sudden, spring training gets a little a little more dicey for Vogelbach. You know, he's a cool story. He could have slotted in to get some of those ABs against righties. And, you know, he can get hot as a firecracker, puts together a, puts together a good, you know, a, a good at bat every time out there, whether you like him or you don't. He's an ex-All-Star, so he thought he was signing at a good spot, and now all of a sudden a future Hall of Famer comes in. Ah, I would, yeah. I, I feel for him. Signing a minor league deal and then someone signs at the end of camp, that's tough. Mm -hmm. I also legitimately think Vado can be very helpful in any clubhouse. You know, We've been talking about that a lot in the offseason. I yep. think he is a really interesting – you know, mind in the game and he can get through to certain players. It's going to help know? somebody. It's going to help someone. Someone's going to say, hey, that combo with Vado led me to this. <laughs> someone else with bad advice, Noel V. Marte suspended 80 games, tested positive for a PED. This is one of my favorite rookies coming up this season for the Reds. You know, I've been talking up the Reds left and right. So I was pissed to see the news. I didn't even see any press release like from the player usually either apologizing or coming up with an excuse. It just kind of like was your Friday news sneak and you're missing out on a huge player that I think would have been their starting third baseman in Cincinnati. Uh, next. What do you next. mean next? Dude, this is a huge loss for the Reds. Yeah. I mean, good job the getting Candelario, but next. huge loss. As Johnny Gomes once told a guy when I was on the Braves, he gave this whole speech about how Johnny Gomes looks at him and goes, well, next. I mean, dude, just don't do not do it. You know what you're doing. Don't do it. Like, be smarter. There's guys everywhere. There's trainers everywhere. Like, next. I mean, it sucks for the Reds, but you know what? Be smarter, no LV Marte, and don't do it. You, I wonder if the team knew about this. I know they say, and I don't know the exact. It would be more like a Tony Clark well, thing. Well, they, they're – well, he's here. Should I try to grab him? There's a whole, there's a whole process to it. I want to know just the process, not this process. Like how long ago? Because there's, there's, you know, they'll fight it. They'll put in, you know, ah, you know, I didn't do this. Test this. How long ago did they know it? And did that kind of coincide with the Candelario signing? I, I'm thinking it didn't because I know the process for some guys that I know how it goes, but I also know. One guy that to this day still says he didn't do anything, and it's a really interesting story. It took almost all of spring training to get his to get his hearing heard, and then he started the season in the big leagues, 
And then he got sent to AAA, and he finally got his suspension then. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was weighing over him. It was weighing on him the whole time. Right. It can take a while. And I don't think there's going to be any any fight here, because even verbally, because it's an anabolic steroid. I think it's just, hey, let's put this under the rug. I got busted. Oops. Um, and, yeah, Candelario can play first base. I mean, there's a few different options here. Candelario can play first. You can put India and McLean as your middle infield and Elliott third with his rocket arm. You know, Ellie can play third. Hmm. No, is that really where you want your? You want Elliot short, and then eighty grade Candelario at third, prospect? and Carrasco no. and Strand at first. Slash well, DH. There's there's options and flexibility, but you are right. The Candelario move looks way way better now. Kyle Tucker, that's Kyle Tucker walking by me. Neato, get him an extension. Name dropper. Name dropper. That's <laughs> that's AJ's life. He's like, oh, there goes Hater in his man bun. By the way, look at him go. You guys can see him. He went that way though. Uh, we missed him. All right, let me show you what the Luis Castillo trade has returned for Cincinnati. I get it. It's still early, and Noel V. Marte should come back, but we don't know what kind of player he is when he comes back and is presumably off of the juice. So he's suspended, thanks to Marine Layer Pod for putting this out there on the return. Edwin Arroyo is no longer a top 100 prospect. Um, he has not done much in low-level uh, minor league ball. Levi Stout is back on the Mariners. And Andrew Moore threw less than 20 innings last year in A-ball. So the Luis Castillo trade is looking more and more like Luis Castillo for Noel B. Marte. And if you're Cincinnati, you need to hit on trades like that and they did hit on some other trades right the trade with minnesota worked out brilliantly to get spencer steer and christian encarnacion strand <laughs> a year and a half ago and we gave them a ton of credit on that front but even if those dudes never turn into anything which is looking to be the case Marte for castillo in my mind still looked great i mean noel v Marte, before knowing about this looks like a 2020 guy who can also handle third base quite nicely as an at least average defender. So I was like, oh, wow, they got a potential all-star player for Luis Castillo. That's what you want. Now we don't know what he really looks like. The real Noel B. Marte. And you don't, yeah, you don't know. Like, how long was he doing this? Was it a one-time thing? I know guys that have had this happen. It wasn't a one-time thing. They just finally got caught. And I'm not saying that's the case for him, but... This is why this is why if you have a chance to trade prospects, you do it. Mm -hmm. Because you have for for Luis Castillo, absolutely. You get a you get a number 1. There's been starts and spurts during the season where he's an ace, but that's not an ace status, so he's a number 1 and he has pitched like that. He's now extended at a cheaper price for the Mariners. Mm -hmm. This is a great trade. I know we get on DePoto for all his trades, but this is a great trade. And there was actually a really good article about Levi Stout. He made his big league debut with the Reds, and now he's back with the Mariners. And he kind of hit on the fact that there was a lot of things he loved about the pitching development with the Mariners and how they were on it, and the Reds didn't have those things. So I don't know if it's more of a – accusation about the Reds or if it's a compliment about the Mariners. Mm -hmm. Well, let me show you one more thing on the Mariners side, because while that trade is looking good for them, the early returns on the Jared Kelnick trade have both pitchers um, needing Tommy John surgery. There's Cole Phillips and Jackson Coar. So TJ actually is less troublesome for me just because it happens to almost every pitcher these days versus a dude getting popped for PEDs because you have no idea if anabolic steroids were taking a player from barely making a roster to a stud because that's what anabolic steroids used to do for some players. So 100%. in this case, yeah, it's just it's it's arms that need time to return, but still just looking at what they got back for Jared Kelnick, I think the part that's missing here on this little tweet aj is the fact that they were able to shed money i mean they got rid of the marco gonzalez contract to me that was just as much what that trade was for that was the top priority was hey we got slammed with a budget that's in the same range as the year before we need to get better so that's in my mind the primary reason why they pulled off a deal like that 
Agreed, but still, I mean, you say elbow surgery is not a big deal, but you know, the Mariners would still like to have these guys either pitching in the big leagues form or developing them in minor leagues. So it is a big deal. And and again, like Kratz said in the last talk about Marte and Castillo, this is why you trade prospects because how many guys traded, hmm. you know, a prospect, top hundred prospect, top this, top that, turn out to be like just superstars. It doesn't happen as much as you people think it's oh, we got four top one hundred guys for so and so. And and you know, two of them might make it, one of them might get a cup of coffee and the other guy might get hurt or might not ever make it. It just it's such a crapshoot. I mean Every, every team hypes up their prospects. Every team hypes up their players to be better than they are. So guess what? When they trade them, there people are like, oh, we got more than what we, you know, oh, we, we, we got, you know, we got this for this guy. We got four guys for one. And you know what? Very rarely do they end up being super superstars unless they've already been to the big leagues and proven it. And it's, it's a tough, tough business, man, the prospect hoarding, what, like a lot of teams like to do. But at some point, if you give them up and you get a bona fide big league star like Luis Castillo – you know, Kelnick's had some moments too. Like, you know what you're getting from Kelnick. You know what you're getting from Castillo. Some of these other guys, you just don't know because some of them are like 18 years old. They might not develop. They might not grow. Things happen. I mean, it's just it's it's hard to it's hard to hang on to prospects for too long for me. And we just read it. We just had it in Ken's article the other day about Tommy John surgeries. Now you look at look at a Jackson Coar. For him, it's great that this happened in the big leagues. It's never great that you get injured. But it's great that he's going to be able to rehab as a big leaguer. Now all of a sudden he's going to be a 29 year old. You, you talk about earning potential. You talk about teams. Let's say he comes out and has a bang up year, his first year off of the IL, first year off of Tommy John. Now all of a sudden he's looking to like maybe get you know, a little bit of a longer contract because he's already up there in age. Now the teams are sitting there going with all this research that they're doing. Oh, uh, well, you know, this is, you know, this Tommy John surgery might only be like a five year thing. So we're not looking to extend and I'm, and I'm only going too far, a little too far into it, but it's not just a, eh, whatever, he'll come back kind of thing anymore. Especially when you talk about, you got him in a trade. That means he should be able to help your team and he won't be able to now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're right on the shelf life on Tommy John surgeries. It used to be in the seven to eight year range. They even said up to ten. Up to in, ten in the article is what the and doctors are saying. Still be the case. We're talking about averages here, but the average is going down, and you're just seeing more double TJ situations where a guy gets it, and then whatever, five years later, he needs to get a Tommy John surgery again. And I will say, some people are actually coming back from a second Tommy John and being able to pitch second. TJ in the past used to mean you're essentially done. I think there was like one or two dudes that kind of really made it back. And then now, I mean, hopefully you'll see that being the case for quite a few pitchers, including Walker Bueller, who's coming off his second TJ at some point this season. And taking and taking the time to do it. You got you to take the time to completely come back from it. And you look at a guy like Cole Phillips, just drafted in the second round in 22. This is where signing bonuses really matter. Like, why is this guy holding out for so much money? He's 20 years old. He'll be 21 in a couple months, in three months, in two months. He's a second-round pick. He's now going to be 21 years old before he throws another professional pitch for a new organization that he's never pitched for. Yeah. And he's got to come back. He's got to come back rehab, rehabbed. And now, if you again, if you do the same timeline, 25 to 26, now that's his prime that they're thinking, oh, Maybe this Tommy John might go again. So you start – that's why I'm, I have an issue with some of that research because nobody knows what Cole Phillips is going to come back like. But if more research comes out like that, then teams are going to be way more reticent to give, give out big contracts. Well, on the big contract front and on this topic, breaking news just tweeted from Brian Hoke, covers the Yanks, friend of the show – Garrett Cole is having an MRI on his pitching elbow. This is what Aaron Boone told reporters this morning in Clearwater, Florida. I don't know many other details yet, but the fact that you even need it is not good. Because I'll say this. I mean, you have the worst case scenario, which is obviously terrible. But even the best case scenario usually means something's wrong. And Garrett Cole even missing some time if that ends up being the case for the Yankees is a huge problem, AJ, in the most competitive division, most likely, in Major League Baseball, or at least top two, right? And a Yankees mm-hmm. pitching staff that 
last year was Garrett Cole and a bunch of five plus ERAs. This is he's gonna obviously. I mean, I don't know. You don't go get an MRI if everything's in there is clean, right? Mm-hmm. So best case scenario, he's probably gonna have to miss at least a couple weeks. We're only a couple weeks out from opening day, that which means he's gonna miss opening day and, and some time there if he has to get built up again. So this is this is a huge huge deal for the Yankees. And for Garrett Cole and for actually the whole American League because we've been talking all year about how tight the American League East could be with the the Blue Jays, the Orioles, the Rays, everyone in that East, right? Well, guess what? You lose Garrett Cole, your best starter, the guy who won the Cy Young last year, that's a huge blow. Now, puts more pressure on Rodon, more pressure on Stroman, more pressure on Nestor to come back. And because this was a guy for the last, you know, since he signed over there, every fifth day, Garrett Cole, it's Garrett Cole day. We're expecting to win. He's going to go out, give us seven innings, save the bullpen. Man, if he's out for an extended time, this is bad news. You know who else has pressure? Who's running the front office? Cashman? Yeah, because there's dudes available for money. Or ownership, I would even say. Not going to happen. Not going to happen, he said? I think it's more – I think it's more – on ownership now, I think Cashman has had an A plus offseason. He has gotten everything he possibly could get without, in my, in his opinion, or, or maybe ownership's opinion, overpaying for somebody. A plus is too aggressive. I, what else could he have, have done? You have to look at. It. You're saying within his financial budget. Yes. What else could he have done? Get a, another starter. We've How? been saying that. Pay for it. You just said in his financial budget. I know, but I'm saying when you grade an offseason for a team, it's got to include that. Like, you could say, no, I'm grading you could it say for, Billy not Bean had Yankees. an A-plus offseason because he was given no. $0. So he, Cash, he spent it on Cashman's a trade. Offseason. Cashman did what he could do. He got the most value out of what he added to this team. He added more to this team than of what he was he was able to add. Yeah, within his – Within what he's allowed to and do, and I think he over. I think he got more value. You got Juan Soto, you got the an all star from the first half last year, they, Marcus Stroman. They didn't get Yamamoto, and they tried to get him. You can't a plus me. They would have had Yamamoto. That's your a plus. It would have looked pretty good right now. It can still be an A for me if they get a starter. But I even felt that way before. So you want the Michael Williams. Lorenzen? Like you just want a starter? No, I want Blake Snell. I've said that the whole off season for them. I think Blake Snell fits. Well, Blake Snell wants to go to the Angels. But this is terrible news for Garrett Cole. You never want pictures of your interior region. I'm sure they already have pictures of his elbow because of the huge contract. They're not just like, yeah, go for it. We're not going to really take MRIs of your entire body for $326 million. No, they're taking pictures of it. They, they, ah, I hate to hear it. Mm. That's really so, tough. is this open the door for Snow? Is this open the door for that signing? I know we've talked about it. Yes. I mean, Scott Boris isn't isn't Garrett Cole a Scott Boris guy? Boris yeah, knew Boris. about it. Hello, hello, Brian. Yes, now I have the two guys you really need. Uh, yes, we will take seventy million. And I don't think Monty wants to go to New York. I mean, he will for the right price, but where does Monty want to go at this point? Where I mean, where I was going to say. I mean, he wants to go to I Texas. We don't point, want him back. I think at this point he has to go wherever will take him. Yeah, I, I mean, I still think there's a missing link in the Cubs rotation too, but okay, they don't. San Francisco, I don't think. I don't think either of them, I guess, at this point are going to end up there. I thought Snow was going to end up there, but these injuries are what Scott Boris was expecting to happen, right? Because it it creates panic mode. If Garrett Cole gets shut down even for a short period of time, it is going to be absolute chaos in New York. Do you disagree? Especially with Rodon, the way he's pitched in spring training. Yeah, so you don't know. I, I You're not watching Rodon right now being like, oh, dude. Got it. That's he's the back. Rodon from him a couple of years ago. You have no idea what you're going to get. And right now, if I had to bet, I'm betting more on the um, – subpar wrote on and that there's still you know something missing there or, or maybe he's still hurt whatever it is i'm not banking on him being a one two or three how many playoff pitchers do they have on the roster right now you paid for him to be i understand but things so change. just so just things changed in one year maybe You've maybe, never seen maybe. That happen before <laughs> well actually, yeah but you... actually a lot of uh, nothing's changed they're they're right now they're still garrett cole and 
and we'll see what we get, right? Yep. I mean, Nestor had some cool gene cleats on the other day, but, I mean, he hasn't pitched that great, right? Stroman, second half, wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. Rodon, I mean, they don't know after last year. You got to see Rodon's he, below up in spring training. And then P.C. The Schmidt, right? Starter? It's got a oh, – gee, Stroman? Yeah. Marcus Stroman? Or, is or, or Nestor? Yeah, if, if, against if the team. You getting fungos right here? Who do you trust? Trust Rodon to go in there opening day and pitch? No. Hey, and does it? Nestor or Stroman? It's not Rodon. No chance. They would not even put him in that hey, situation. Hey, there's Justin. Hi, Justin. Who's motivated? Hold on. Real quick timeout. Did Justin wave back? Yeah. Okay. He did. He see. did. He's on, a, he's on his phone, though. He's, he, it was wow. one of these. Oh, hey. Hey, AJ. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I just wanted to see if he was saying hello. I mean, we, if we just get him to wave. You see, he just waved to me again. Rehabbing on his phone? Mm-hmm. Right. He's about to walk behind me right here. See? There you go. Is. That is king in his court right there. Oh, yeah. All right, so panic mode maybe for Yankees fans. We'll see if we find out any more details. But, yes, panic mode. Just the Definitely. one guy you didn't want to hear shitty news about. This is their yeah. weak spot and their biggest question mark. It's the starting rotation. So we'll see. Uh, The St. Louis Cardinals rotation is definitely revitalized this year with (laughs) a Sonny Gray, who we spoke to last week, a Kyle Gibson, and we spoke to our buddy Lance Lynn, who helped us find out that Angel Hernandez is indeed in midseason form. Spring training is for the umpires, and Angel Hernandez wanted to make sure that he was a pain in the ass right from the jump. So... He has now joined the club, talking about Lynn again here, of being booted from a spring training game. A very exclusive club that I wish we had more insight on. Anyone anyone here, raise your hand if you've been booted from a spring training game. Oh, what do you got for us, AJ? I text Lance right away and say, congratulations. Welcome to the club. He's like, Welcome what club? The club? Did you really? Spring training ejection club. <laughs> Did you actually text Ollie, him that? 100%. And then poor Ollie. And then he said the worst part was the walk. Because he got ejected twice, honestly, in this game. He got ejected there. And then he went to go out in the bullpen because they were on the road. So he was going to throw his pitches right here. And Angel made the third base umpire walk all the way out there and get him. Now, the best part is – so Lance had to walk. They were in the left field. And they were leave, He had to leave from the right field. So he had to walk slowly, and he just milked it all the way. And then the wave at the end where he's just like, yeah, I'll be back, guys. <laughs> Now he's got to go to the backfield in the dark to finish his to finish yeah. his pen. That's so petty. Like one thing to boot him yeah. from the game, and then really in spring hey, training, he can't just be in the bullpen to to finish up his pitches. Like it, as if it's what is it a, a safety hazard? I, I get it, but I don't. I really don't get it. I don't know. I've seen it. I've seen. I saw a guy get thrown out of a spring training last day inner squad scrimmage. Remember Arubio Durazo? Yeah. His cousin, Eddie Durazo, I think his name was. Anyway, never made the big leagues. <laughs> he got thrown out of an inner squad game that the umpires like volunteer to come over <laughs> and oh. umpire and he got tossed. See ya. He was bitching about balls and strikes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's John Denton. Uh, more land.
Hey, we're back. Braun and Kratz, apologize for the tech difficulties. We're getting ourselves set up over in Houston um, with that Wi-Fi. It is glorious, especially on a windy day down in Palm Beach. But apparently, Justin Verlander is getting set up, so we'll talk to him in just a sec. Looking forward to that. He'll be sitting next to Przinsky. But just to put a bow on Angel Hernandez just winning in life, at his job as umpire in Major League Baseball. A lot of fans in the chat were like, well, how does he still have a job? He essentially has tenure. He had like the lawsuit situation going on with the league. I don't really think they can let him go. I don't understand all of the ramifications behind the scenes, but there's also a union there. You can't just boot umps, right? You can't, and they there needs to be some kind of checks and balances. And unfortunately, when Angel's out there, you have a predisposed idea that, oh, he's just going to be terrible. And then there's a fringe call and you're like, he's terrible. I don't like that. I don't like that narrative. But there should be, overall, there should be a, just just a, just a checks and balances. You don't do good. Hey, you know what? You're getting sent down. You're not getting, in, you know, you're not getting your contract next year. You got to earn it. I think everybody should earn it. I agree. There has to be some type of system for a situation like that. I think we're good to go. Przinsky, you got us? Justin Verlander. Just All right, go ahead, AJ. Take it away, dude. We hear you. Okay. Justin Verlander. Cyan. How many Cyans? Three. Three Cyans. MVP. Start two World Series. You don't agree with the MVP, but that's fine. I don't, but that's we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I don't Why are we not going to talk about it? You should be able to get an MVP and a really good goal. Uh, how's camp going? I know you're a bit behind. Yeah. But otherwise. I saw of you off the mound the other day was like you were blobbing. I was like, that's not. No, that was that was the video that I saw. Yeah, yeah. I was actually concerned about that because they were throwing like I'm trying to like replicate five day rotation. So there's one day where there's like okay, let's build some intent, let's build some um, volume, and then on the second day I'm throwing my like lobbing it. Movement. It was just funny because the you were you were literally going yeah. like yeah that day I wouldn't have broken a pane of glass. Um. I'm watching Kitty's over here throwing, and they have all the track men. And we've had some pitchers on. We have Josiah Gray in Houston, right, right over there. Do you, are you a track man guy? Or are you a track or Are you a, like every pitch? Because he's like every pitch. They look at me and go, "Here's my numbers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it." Um, I mean, I, I think it's a tool that should be utilized and can be utilized. Um, I think I like a lot of people have fallen into the trap of relying on it too much, um, and then sometimes I've got to remind myself, like, and I almost have to take it away. All right, don't bring the track man out today. What I want to go work on is just feel. I want to feel my body. I want to try to throw the ball where I want to. I don't want to just like look at some numbers on the screen and say, oh, that was a good pitch or not. I want to like feel if it's a good pitch. So um, I like it, but I don't want to rely on it too much. Yeah, what is it like without Maldonado here? He caught, I mean, for like the last, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many years he's caught every one of your starts, right? Um, yeah, I mean, look, Maldi and I created a great relationship. I, I love that guy. Um, and had a lot of fun working with him. He puts in a ton of work behind the scenes. He's a good leader. Um, but, um, you know, I think the organization felt like it was Diaz's time to step up and be the guy. And, um, you know, I'm excited to work with him. I, I, obviously, I'm a little upset that I can't get in that spring training routine and, and, and work with him. But um, uh, seeing all the work he's putting in, I'm, I'm excited for his opportunity. So you're a personal catcher guy? I am not. You're, oh, I, gotta have, I have never dictated. You're, you're Greg Maddox. You're like, I got to have Eddie Perez. No, I've never. I, I, this is true. <laughs> I've, ne I've never dictated. One time I asked to have a catcher, and it was uh, it was because it was the last start of the year. And um, I think it just, I think it was actually Baldy that they wanted me to catch me. And it had been Chirinos literally every start the whole season. And this was uh, 19. So Garrett and I were kind of like going back and forth with Cy Young. And it was like, all right, can I mean, it's the last start. I had the same catcher all year. Let's not go shaking things up this time. So I asked for that. And then, um, other than that, though, I've always let the manager. It's like my job is to go pitch. Your job as the manager is to set us up to win a ball game. And whatever you think is the best situation for that, 
you do that. If I was, if I was the manager, I'd be like, I'll take Justin every fifth day. We'll, we'll be all right. We'll be all right for a long time. That's the way I like it, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're obviously, I know you're behind, but the whole thing here with Houston is the postseason. Right? Like, I mean, the regular season, you guys are good, obviously. But then you, still for you, you're, what, 40? 30, 41? Yeah. Man, you're making me feel older, thanks. Uh, but, like, you want to be ready for October, obviously. I mean, I know you have to get there first. But the, the goal is to get to October and then be ramped up and ready to make it. So let's get to the LCS. It's like, okay, Masters in the postseason. We're at the LCS in Game 7. Win or lose, we, then we get a chance to get a ring, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, that's the goal. Um, you know, you can't put the cart in front of the horse. Of course. Um, and uh, you know, most of my career, man, I, like, this is actually the hardest point. To try to like grab the engine back up. Usually, once I'm going, I recover well. I feel good, and come September, October, I usually feel my best. Um, you know, so that has taken care of itself to this point. But um, yeah, that's, that's the goal. Feel good, not going. All right, you said you were going after the Cy Young with Garrett Cole the other year. I'm not sure if you heard the news. He's going for an MRI as a pitcher. Your MRI, when you're the starter, when you're the leader of the staff, you're the ace, do you sit there and, like, do you hesitate to get an MRI? Or are you like, no, I got to get this checked, it's fine? Or are you like, no, I have the weight of this team on my shoulders? Yeah, I mean, it, to, to, to take a look under the hood is always a bit nerve-wracking because you just don't know what you're going to find. But at the same time, I'm always somebody who, and I can only speak from my personal experience, not from what parents are going through. Um, but uh, information is, is what you want. And sometimes it might not be great information, and you just got to deal with it. But at least you know what the path is from there. And I think that's what the point of an MRI is. Um, you know, So even though it's a bit nerve-wracking and scary, uh, when you come out of it, at least you have a clearer picture of hopefully nothing. Like that. I think that's what everybody always hopes for. Um, but if it is something, um, it sucks and it's a punch to the gut. Uh, but like I said, at least you at least you know what to do. All right, last one before we let you go get back to work. You came back. You had Tommy John. You came back, right? You see guys always, you know, Tommy John, Tommy John, Tommy John. It seems like every day there's a new guy. Can you explain, like, what that rehab is like to, to people that are out there just watching and say what the work you put in? Because every guy that comes back usually comes back in unbelievable shape. Yeah. Because they work on their body, they work on mechanics, and make changes. What's that like, not only mentally but physically, to go through, and then come back better than ever? Yeah. I mean, I think physically, uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty scripted for you. I, I think the, the the elbow rehab and look, mine went very well. Like I I didn't have many hiccups. Um, it, it, it it pretty much followed the script that it was supposed to. So that was my experience. The the viewpoint I took was that. I've never had a year, a year plus in my life where I didn't have to throw a baseball, play in a baseball. Was season. your wife like get out? No, we actually <laughs> got closer. Go figure. Um, but uh, we, it was just a, a time that I looked at saying, okay, what else can I address? And so to your point, when guys come back in good shape, I I was able to look at my body and really address some of the underlying issues that caused the Tommy John that I was never really able to address before because I just you just don't have enough time um, you know one off season seems like a lot but it's you know it's only a few months and, um, you know so when I took a bigger picture and had that much of a, of a, of a window to address my body I, I really uh, really did that and, and I think I had benefited from that greatly um, obviously back and having success uh, mentally, I feel like yeah, that's the hardest part. It's like walking a tightrope. Um, you know, you got to, uh, it's like, okay, push your boundaries a little bit every day, but don't do too much to hurt yourself. And so, like, every day you kind of come in and uh, it's, like, it's like a mental ping pong match. Like, some days you feel good, some days you feel bad, and, and it's just, you, you, uh, you don't you try not to let it get to you um, and, and, and take each day as it comes. But it's a year, it's a year plus of like, come in. Yeah. How do I feel today? All right, I feel good. Let's push it. Come in the next day and hope you feel good. You feel sore and you're like, damn. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, am I gonna? Did I break something or not? And then you know, so you're just doing that for a year, man. It's it's, it's a lot. It's a lot mentally. Well, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Go back and get to work. Right, right. Good to see you. Right. We'll see you on the golf Thanks, course. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, All right, we'll see you back here. Thank you. Uh, while they get set up for the next guest, but yeah, cool insight from, from Justin Verlander on you know what the recovery process is for dozens of pitchers 
every single year um, that are going through, you know, a long, long injury recovery. I know we touched on that quite a bit what last week on Friday with the article that Ken Rosendahl and, you know, Sarah's put out uh, in The Athletic. Yeah, and it's to watch guys go through it is grinding. They go, like he said, there's good days and there's bad days. There's days, should I push it? Some guys just like put their headphones in and they just are pissed for a day. It's rightly so. Like anybody that's gone through PT or rehab for anything, there's good days and bad days. They have a goal in mind. And as a competitor, you're not just like, whatever, man, I'm getting my salary. I'm good to go. I'm just going to kind of sit around and do nothing. No, especially a guy like Verlander. I I couldn't imagine like a competitor like that, an elite competitor needing to have him. You're like, oh my gosh, like get out of here. I'm sure they're itching to do other things. It can be a distraction to some teams. Not saying he is. I'm saying it can be a distraction because there is there is a alpha male that wants to get out there and help the team the only way he's ever known how to help the team. You know, a guy like me has to rehab. I've always been on the bench. So it's it's different. It's less of a distraction, but it's I can't I can't imagine. I'm so thankful I never had to go through it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get to um, an injury here. Uh, injury suck. So, um, Lars Newbar looks like he won't start the season, uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals. He has two rib fractures, um, two non-displaced rib fractures. So opening day status in jeopardy. That was the tweet in the past 48 to 72 hours from Katie Wu. She said, Tommy Edmonds status is also doubtful for opening day. So there's two thirds of the starting outfield looking like it's going to be out to start the season, but otherwise it's okay. No, it's totally fine. I mean, Tyler O'Neill just slept. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. It's why it's one of those things that people say, well, they have a plethora. Did the Cardinals have a plethora of outfielders or did they just play everybody in the outfield? You know, is is I get what you're saying. Is Tommy Edmond their their backup shortstop or is he their starting center field? Is, is he it? their starting right is second he was a I gold glove it. second base. Like like solidify your guys, put them out of position and then fill in there. And you know what? That's tough, but other guys are going to step up. I think, I think Gorman will step up. I think you might have to play guys out of position, but for his at bat basis, Lars Newbar was awesome. And I will say O'Neill needed to get traded. There was, you know, Agreed. Uh, Agreed. There was shit going out on, but anyway, let's go back out to Astros camp right now. Uh, new manager Joe Spada joining us, sitting down with AJ. All right, AJ, take it away, dude. The new manager of the Houston Astros. She's playing one of the old managers, AJ Hinch, today across the way. But uh, Joe Spada is here to talk about the Astros spring training and everything going on. What's up, Thanks. Joe? How you doing? How's camp? I'm doing we well, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, great to have you. Congratulations on the job. We haven't spoken since. And um, we had AJ on a few weeks ago, and he already was talking trash. So are you excited (laughs) that you get to face him now in the American League and try and beat him? (laughs) Yeah, you know, we we have changed lineups yesterday. And I told him, listen, I got the A A club on the field, you know. Um, We went up there earlier this spring, and I so I told him, I said, listen, you come down in a couple of weeks. So you better be ready for uh, for a better game. So he, we, we're excited. I'm always, it's always fun to watch, a, you know, play AJ and hang out, get to hang out with him. Yeah, we were up there. We were in Tigers camp today. Oh. And he was like, I got to go. He's like, I've got the Astros it's a, coming in. It's a must win. It's oh, a must yeah. win. He was fired up. He was ready to go. <laughs> must win spring training game. Yes. Hey, uh, what was your reaction when you saw the Josh Hader news? Were you surprised or did you have an idea that the team was going to go after him? Because you know, the cross section there, of course, was Kendall Graveman going down with the injury, and it seemed like that really picked things up. All right, we'll go back to them in a sec. We lost them. The wind is wind, up. Wi-Fi, the whole deal. It's been a freaking blast out there. Effort at Astros camp. So, 
Um, we'll get back there coming up in a sec, but there was a cross section there. I mean, just like we're talking about some injuries earlier in the show with Garrett Cole and maybe the Yankees respond. I mean, we did get a response from Houston when Kendall Graveman was kind of deemed out for the season. It's what we're at least for a good chunk of time. I don't know. It's what a World Series team does. It is. They were like, oh, he's he's available out there. We'll go get him. Yeah. Um, So anyway, that's in my mind put the Astros in a really strong position for the postseason. You know, if they can get everyone to the right spot, healthy, come playoff time, it is going to be a significant problem at the back end of the bullpen, you know? No doubt. That shortens shortens a game. And hopefully Joe can hear us, even though he can't see us. Yeah. What an easy job. <laughs> what for, an easy job. Your first yeah. this is like this is like, you know, this is <laughs> It's like waving Billy Hamilton around third base. This is this isn't like trying to figure out if I'm scoring from second. Like you just you just got a couple things to worry about. So Joe can hear us. I'm so glad he's he knows that this is just an easy plug and play. No stress at all. You're not even gonna have any gray hairs at the end of this season. <laughs> Which is rare. Usually you take over that position and you see the progression from Really opening day, because spring training is still chill, but opening day until you get to you know September, October range is when things start to get a little bit, a little bit. Piney. Right? A little bit of piney. Yeah. I think we're trying again. So let's see if we can get them back. Um, Joe Spada and AJ Pruszynski from Astros Camp. We'll try here one more time to see if we can hear him. Uh, guys, you good? Joe, AJ? Nope. Not hearing them yet. Anybody? Anybody? Not hearing them yet. Okay. They're uh, talking. They said they're talking, but they do not hear us. Okay. We tried. Oh, we oh, know. Oh. How about now? I hear wind. So we got you. We, we got hear you. you. Okay. It's going to be windy. We're sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no that's okay. It looks like it's a great day. Um, all right. So, Joe, you heard, I think, some of that. Uh, Kratz just said you have the world's easiest job at the back end of your bullpen. Do you agree? Uh, you, you know, with the lead the sixth inning, we're in, we, yeah, we're in really good shape. Uh, keeping those guys healthy is it, going to be the key. Keeping our lineup healthy is the key to this team. But um, lead with the six is going to be a nice it's a nice game to manage, no doubt about it. But Hater, hate, you named Hater closer, right? Yeah, so once, when we started a conversation with Hater, I reached out to press. And uh, my first comment, so listen, we are exploring the opportunity to bring Hater in. I want to keep you in the loop that there's a potential that happened. I want to be transparent with Presley from the very beginning. He's one of the best closers in the, closers in the game. He's been he's been lights out for us for, for so many years. So I want to be you know transparent from the get go. And Presley's been a pro since that conversation. You know, he, hasn't, he hasn't given up a run in the postseason <laughs> in like three years, right? Right. And he's like, you know what, Joe? He makes us that much better. I, I'm 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 all in. So um, I had a conversation with both of them when I got here to spring training. I wanted to make sure that um, they heard it from me face to face, all on the same page. They both have earned the right to um, close games in the ninth inning. So uh, we were a better team with both guys in the back end, no doubt about it. Did you think about putting them in like in the batting cage and whoever comes out of the batting cage first, <laughs> like they're, they're the closer? You know what, I, I thought about probably flipping a coin. And, you know, <laughs> no, it, you know what? It, it, it was not a, it was not an easy decision. It was, it was conversations that they both, uh, we needed to have all three of us. And um, I, I, I'm just glad that I, I'm dealing with professionals. These guys, at the end of the day, they just want to hold a trophy and be the last, team, the last team standing. I, I hate, I hate doing hypotheticals, but your team is so like stamped lineup. You're rarely writing in a different lineup. Let's say a position like shortstop, something happens to Pena. I don't want to put that out there, but you have two elite all-star fielders in Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve. Would you think at this point in spring training you could say, you know what, we're a World Series team. We want to plug Alex Bregman or Jose Altuve in at shortstop. You think that would be something that you would feel comfortable with? Uh, you, you know what, I, I think we – we forget about how valuable Mauricio Dubon is to our team. If there's something that happens on the infield, 
Arisha Dubon can just step up and give you gold glove defense in any of those three positions that that you mentioned. And you know, and also he took a step forward last year offensively. So we feel really comfortable having Marisha Dubon. And something happens to those guys, giving some of those guys a day off, Marisha Dubon will be ready to step up and do the job. I mean, you, you would want to take Mookie Betts and put him from second base to shortstop. But the no. week before your starting games, you'd be like, hey, by the way, you're our starting shortstop. <laughs> You know what? We have taken pride on our defense for so many years, and these guys are so pro on both sides of the ball. You know, we've been very lucky and fortunate to have these guys healthy for so many years and, and, and being able to be so good on the defensive side. All right, last one, Joe, before you let go. Are you going to be nervous? First game, opening day in Houston, Yankees on the other side. You're going to go out, you're going to meet Aaron Boone, who you used to work for, right? And you're going to shake his hand. And in the first pitch, is there, there's going to be butterflies? No, be no, no, no doubt about it. Butterflies will, will be there. Um, if not, I will not, you know, I will not, you know, I'm passionate about what I do. I work really hard to get to this point. So uh, I'm going to have my parents in the stands. My family's going to be there. So emotions are going to be running high. So, yeah, there will definitely be butterflies, but I'm, I'll be prepared. I'm excited. No doubt. You're going to script the game? You're going to be like, okay, I guess JV now, Fromberg's going to go five. Then we can go Abreu, we can go Presley, we can go Hater. We win, we want to know. And then you're like, I retire, I'm undefeated. Well, it sounded like you just named my opening day starter, but we haven't <laughs> done that yet. We haven't done that yet. That sounded really nice. Just, that sounded really nice if we could just play it out that way. You know, our guys are ready, excited, and our team is committed to win. Hey, I, I've, I've had an opening day, not as an Astros manager, but as an Astro. I want you to know that. AJ will pay you the same amount I got paid for what I did on opening day if you do what I did on opening day. I don't know if you ever saw it or not. You were you were super prim and proper Yankee at that point. <laughs> I don't remember. Remind me what happened that day. I took a dive on purpose on, when they called my name. I do I came out and I just dove right on the right on the orange carpet. So AJ will pay you two grand because that's what <laughs> Scott Feldman and Luke Gregerson paid me if you take a dive. Oh man, I, I don't know. I could do that on my, my my first time around on the job. Maybe maybe year two, year three. Okay, yeah. fair. We'll we'll rehit that. We'll yeah, rehit exactly. that. We'll revisit we'll that. Right. Hey, if he, if he we went to World Series this year, you can take it down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Joe, con uh, congrats on the job again. Uh, enjoy the rest of spring training, and uh, we'll see you during the season. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Spot, a new manager of the Houston Astros with us. I also think due to inflation and in my mind, you kind of got ripped off, a task like that needs to be five figures. It can be low five figs, but there's enough money floating around that I think for a manager to take a face plant on opening day, right. the starting rate has to be 10 Gs. We'll ask, we'll ask the next there's some rich dudes on that. Well, that's the next rich guest that comes on. How many guys have nine-figure Major League money on that team? Verlander, Altuve. Bregman. Bregman. Jordan's not quite yet. Hater. Hater. Because with this deal plus what no. he's made, right? Tom, he's, I'm at he's probably short. Yeah. McCullers is probably the tick short. He's yeah, close. He's, he's probably a bit short. So five, five to six guys, five to six guys could could foot a 10, 10 G's for oh, oh, yo espada. They could cough out a G and <laughs> contribute to it. All right, so we're going to get Lance McCullers on the show soon. And in the meantime, we have another little injury update from oh. Yankees camp. Aaron Boone said Aaron Judge is, quote, mid-spring beat up. And he's not in his scheduled BP group. He's not expected to play again until Wednesday. Personally, I'm a little less concerned about this one, you know, but still, it's not great. And for me, it still plays to the one thing that I'm looking for from the Yankees this year to preserve their superstar. Because as great as Aaron Judge is in the outfield, in my opinion, he's better in the corner and you will preserve him better in the corner. I know he got hurt. In the corner, but that was a fluke injury. That's MLB's fault for not having padding in certain spots. That still makes no sense to me, and I know they've at least patched up certain spots there. Um, but for me, this is another caution sign to the Yankees that you need to be careful. You disagree? I, I just don't like him playing in center field. 
how many guys have lasting power in center field? That that position eats you up. Are you asking him to play center field this year or the next eight years? Personally, if it's me, I never want him in center field. I don't know. I don't know. And I, and I, and I have to lean towards. I have to lean towards what they. Yeah, I have to lean towards what Adam Jones said. Hey, it really beats you up. Nimmo was on, kind of beat you up. There's a lot of Everybody running. Everybody says that. I Iron get it. Buxton will tell you that. But you built this team Bader. this way. This isn't like – But that's a mistake. You you need to – But the mistake's already been made. in the corner. You already have the most value you can, and I think they're going to mitigate it. I think they're going to pull a defensive switch. Really good teams have pulled defensive switch. I, played I understand, it. but you still have to play there for the first five, six innings or whatever happens mm-hmm. or if the game's closed. You know, so I don't think it's going to be as many as Booney's saying it's going to be now. And I'm not saying that's saying everything goes, if everything goes perfect, if he's in center field every single day. That means everyone on that roster is healthy and they are smashing the baseball. Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, Judge came out after two ABs yesterday. They said that that was planned, but and everything was okay. Yeah, this is nothing. This is nothing. He's hitting 140 in camp. He, it's not like he's not going to hit in a cage or he's not going to hit on, like, he's going to get his swings in. They, I don't think – I'd have a hard time believing this isn't this isn't planned. Uh, Jack Curry spoke about maybe a mid-May return for Jason Dominguez. Younger players can rehab quicker. That's a thing. Your body can recover quicker from injuries, Triple obviously, a. with a young age. Triple A, but then maybe he comes up and he's the center fielder, and then you have Judge and Soto, and boom, there you go. All right, let's go back out to Astros camp. We've got Jeremy Pena with us uh, for the first time on FT2. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. There's that. And how you doing, Jeremy? You know, I, I haven't seen you in a minute, actually. I, I got a lot of uh, a lot of positive reviews when at one point in the playoffs a couple of years ago, I, I said on the end of the interview to just give me the famous sign. You know what it is. Uh-oh. You not hear him? I can't hear him. No. We, lo- we had you. Oh. Maybe volume. AJ, Hold tell, him to, tell, him, give tell him, him to give us the famous sign you gave him in the postseason. There was some famous sign he had with you. I don't know. Famous sign. You got to remind me of that one. The heart. Oh, the heart. Yeah. yeah we still, still doing that. That's still around. Yeah, yeah. Did you uh, make any changes this offseason? I did. Because no, you had the bat down, the last year went more bat up, right? So what, are we going like a hybrid? Correct. So this year is more of like a simplification of the two. Kind of having my bat a little more relaxed. Uh, simplifying the swing, less moving pieces, and being more consistent with it. Why, why did you go – because I never really got to talk to you about Why did you go from here to here? And then you also had the big leg kick. You kind of kind of took it away, right? Correct. So this movement down here was something that kind of developed on its own. You know, it gave me pretty good timing. And, uh, you know, I had some success with it. And then the toe down was something that developed on its own as well. I felt pretty comfortable with the toe down. The leg kick was kind of hard for me to time on pitches. So that's how so it, it kind of – you know, you, you did all right because you did win like some MVPs that were kind of important there. You know, with with the one. So I don't know. I would have been like, I don't know if I'm going to change where I'm at. I, I don't know. So defensively, anything you're working on defensively here in camp? So defense, the biggest thing is you know getting back into game mode, getting back into game mode, uh, kind of creating different angles, creating simple angles uh, to make plays easier. Especially with the fast runners. What, what, what's your? How long does it take you to get your legs underneath you? Right? Is it like a week, two weeks of games? What is it game wise to get ready to where you're like, okay, I'm ready to play a big league game? A lot of guys, a lot of guys are different, but for me, I would say two weeks of games, I feel good to go. You know, even a week, you get a week of full games, and you're good to go. You know, you just got to see the uh, pitchers. You just got to see bats off the uh, balls off the bat, and you're ready to go. What? Do you, I'm sure you saw what happened with Mookie, right? They said, hey, Mookie, by the way, you're going to play shortstop? Correct. Any Let's advice for him? And how hard is that? I mean, he's an athlete. You know, he's an yeah. athlete. Okay, I'm, I'm an athlete. I couldn't play shortstop. <laughs> Stop I it. think he played second base. <laughs> he did. Uh, in the still. minors, you know. Uh, we played second base in the big leagues. Exactly. So, I think I think he'll he'll get it done. He's such a great athlete. He's such a great baseball player. He's such a competitor that I think he'll find a way to, you know, do it and do it right. You know, okay, he's, so I think he'll have a pretty good It would year. be like them coming to you and saying, hey, you're playing center field opening day. You got a week. <laughs> Could you do it? I'll get it done. I'll be I'll be ready. Okay. All right. Because I I feel like, I mean, it's always harder the closer you move to home plate, right? So 
in the outfield to the infield, you know, if you're catching, obviously a former catcher, catching the hardest, right? But to me, it's like, you know, he was a gold glove center fielder, right fielder, then he moved to second, now he's moving to short. And, and, and honestly, to me, shortstop is probably the most important defensive position on the field. You kind of control everybody, you move people with you, right? You, you control the whole infield, you control the cuts and relays. So to me, that's the biggest thing. It's not necessarily like the fielding and the throwing. It's like, does he know where to go on bump plays? Does he know where to go on cutoffs? Does he know how to control like, hey, you know, hey, Breggy, slider, slider, right? Like there's so much more that goes into just like fielding a backhand and throwing it from the hole. That's very true, very true. Uh, like you said, I think it's easier to go from closer so further away from home plate. But like I said, he's played second base before. This is not new to him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's played shortstop at a point in his life. And yeah, he'll, I think he'll be pretty good. Any any goals this year for you? Per- personal goals that you want and you say, you know, not number wise. I mean, everyone goes in the eye, oh, I want to hit 300, I want to hit 30, I want to drive. I mean, obviously, right? But is there anything like small things that, that a, an average person sitting on their couch would be like, Oh, Jeremy Pena is working on first step quickness or like you talked about angles, angle to his back end on a fast runner, what, things like that. I say my biggest goal this year is pertaining to swing decisions, kind of swinging the better pitches, let go to, of the not so good pitches and then swinging the pitches I could drive. You know, that's the uh, that's the focus for this year. I'll be in a little more selective. How do you do that? I guess I swung, listen, I swung at everything. Correct. I mean, so, some people could do that, swing at everything, have success like you did. Uh, but you know, I just think it's bringing a great approach to home plate and kind of sticking with it. Is that, is know? that like an approach like you look at the, the, the iPad and you say, okay, this guy's going to do this, this, this to me? Or is it an approach like you look at yourself and say, all right, I'm not going to – or do you talk to like Bregman who doesn't swing at anything, right? He's very <laughs> controlled, right? I think if there's a guy to talk to, it's Bregman. Okay. You know, and he, Bregman always has a great plan coming into the game. And I always love picking his brain, see where he's at. And kind of morph that into me, you know, because not every not every player is the same, not every swing's the same. So take little bits and pieces from every player and kind of uh, take what I can. I, I say go to go to go up to Joe who just had on and say, Hey, I want to hit leadoff because that way first pitch you know you're getting a fastball, <laughs> like Altuve does, and just whack, be ready first pitch. I mean, I, I think Altuve is solidified in that leadoff spot. You know, he's uh, <laughs> he's done it. Feels like every game he sees one pitch hits a home run. You know, it's uh, special to see. How, how does he do it? I mean, because people say, oh, he's so small, but that dude, I mean, he gets some whip. Yeah, he's strong. He's strong. Oh, yeah. He's small, but he's strong. And he's he's twitchy, you know, so he knows how to move that, that stick fast. And if you move the stick fast, you can hit, hit the ball hard. Is there is there a, I mean, is it World Series or bust again here? Like, when you come to spring training, are you already thinking, like, okay, well, I know I'm going to be in the postseason. Now it's how far can we get? Because, I mean, every year, right, you've been here. Every, I mean, since most of these guys got here, Bregman and, and Altuve was on a little bit of the worst teams, but now, I mean, it's every year McCullers, you guys trade for Verlander. It is, it is every year LCS or World Series. I think the goal is always the same. You know, the goal coming into spring training is always get back to the World Series, you know, and no one's taking it for granted. No one's, you know, it's already happened because it's not, it's a lot of work. You know, there's a lot of great teams out there, but the team's hungry. You know, we are, everyone's putting in the work. Everyone's one goal, one team. So I'm excited. Who's, who's in the best shape of their life? The best shape of their life? I mean, I feel like Altuve just keeps getting better. Really? Every year. I feel like Altuve just shows up and he's faster and he's... <laughs> you guys race? He doesn't want to race me. He's, he's scared to lose. Really? He's to lose, you know, he's a... He wants to race on his own terms. I'm like, oh. we, got a, we got a scheduled day when we both come in and we race. But he wants to race when he's feeling good. Oh. That's not going to work. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, AJ. Jeremy, uh, you... Yeah, hold up. Yeah. Wait, one more. Ask him. Ask him what his reaction was when the Josh Hader news was announced. Did oh. he, was he surprised? They want to know what you what you thought when you heard that you guys signed some guy named Josh Hader. Oof, man, I'm so glad he came to our team. And, uh, <laughs> Have you faced uh, him? I faced him. My What'd first, you do? Punchy? I hit a ground ball. Oh, ground ball okay. to second that's, base. That's, that's yeah, okay. Bad, that's bad. cool. Yeah, it was my second at bat. Spring training. Oh, and, spring training. Okay. Yeah, he uh, he's electric. You know, he's electric. Shows up every single day. Hard worker. Don't you wish you had dude. his hair? I don't think I could pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could pull that off. But, you know, he, he looks like a very humble guy, hard worker. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play behind him this year. All right. Nice. Yeah. Yes, you, got, you guys got a pretty good back end. Abreu, <laughs> Presley, and Hader. That's pretty good. I think good. we have a pretty good lineup, too. Yeah. You know, I think we, Your lineup's always good. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, you know, one day, you know, you 
can hit it like Jordan. That dude's a monster, but he steps yeah, in the he box, really, you're like, oh rates. boy. Man, one of the best in the game. Uh, for sure, hands down. I mean, Tucker, Jordan, Altuve, Bregman, Altuve, Bregman. Pito, Pito, Pena, McCormick, Diaz. Diaz, you name it. It's not, Everybody it's not bad. in that lineup. It's not bad. So, you guys got a good, pretty pretty decent team. I'm excited. All right, excited. good for you. Yeah, Thanks sir. for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Jeremy. Appreciate you. Thanks, AJ. We'll come back to you in a, in a sec. Um, Thanks, brother. We're going to touch on some hot corner topics, and I actually want to start with J.D. Davis because this – continues the story of San Francisco getting an elite third baseman in Matt Chapman. <laughs> There's so much head shaking today. Are you shaking your head because of his personal situation and what happens to JD now? Yes, that's, that's it. Like he'll be fine. He'll find a job. Yeah. He's going to have a job. He is likely going to get released. No. And then they don't have to pay Let most me. of his salary. So what happened was, he went to arbitration with the Giants. He yep. won. They were fighting over like a few hundred grand. But arbitration is not guaranteed. His will be. A certain amount will be because he has over five years of service. A he certain five amount, years, but not the whole thing. He has five years and 137 days. It may be, and they could structure it different, but that five years is a cutoff. So I think 45 days should be guaranteed but there's also it's confusing because there's also another date in spring training where it's close enough to the season they make this move and then it wipes it out and makes it non-guaranteed so i i don't know specifically but i ran into it because i was three days short of or 11 days short of five years going into one season and it made my contract which i thought was agreed upon as guaranteed and it didn't. So for me, that's why I shake my head. Not the fact you're that you're saying it sucks for him because it sucks. For he him. thinks he's the starting third baseman. All of a sudden, Matt Chapman signs. He's thinking maybe they put Chapman at shortstop since Luciano seems to be losing the job to Nick Ahmed, and no one was calling JD Davis. He was actually that's the biggest in thing. the movie theater. And that's the biggest he thing. He never got any news about it, and then I'm sure he shows up the next day, and they're like, "Actually, we're probably going to let you go." We're putting you on waivers. First, they, of course, were trying to trade him. Teams also know they have the Giants, right? They're definitely letting him go. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Yes, he'll, he'll have a job. I think he'll maybe end up with a team like the Blue Jays, who lose a Chapman and I don't think have a really strong plan yet at third base. So even if JD is in the mix there, it could help. Smashes lefties. Any team that has third base a third base need and they want somebody that smashes lefties like we need to reference the Alex Anthopoulos interview from last week from last Friday I think he was on the personal person part of making roster decisions at least give the guy a call Matt Chapman didn't just all of a sudden say hey Giants I'm gonna sign with you here's my contract and Giants go oh, what no it's okay to be like hey you know what like, that's what happened with me and when they signed Grandall with the Brewers. They were like, look, we're not signing anybody else because of the value we feel like you bring unless a guy like Grandall comes in in a one-year deal. I'm like, no chance that happens. Well, it happened, and you deal with it. But that communication was had. So to me, just reference to Alex Anthopoulos interview talking about what it means to build a team and how you treat those people mm -hmm. um defense you know has been a work in progress i think his whole career but it's gotten better 18 dingers last year yeah he's a big <laughs> leaguer he'll, he'll end up on a team but yeah. for san francisco they were like this is chapman every day hopefully. absolutely good for them and we're good yeah so i liked the move 100%. And, mean, and and lead him. run prevention, it's going to help the staff a ton. It's a team that should build themselves up that way. That's how they won. They didn't have the world's most dynamic, most powerful lineups when they were winning World Series titles. Tough place to hit. Right. Tough place so to hit. So make might it as even well, tougher. Might as well make it tougher. Your strength, if you can't if you can't improve your weakness, just bolster your strength. Mhm. Mm all right, let's bring AJ in for this. So AJ, we we're just talking about JD Davis getting let go or put on waivers, I should say. 
by the San Francisco Giants at the moment here. So um, couldn't figure out a trade for him. Chapman gets to fill in the spot. Uh, you got us, dude? I got you. Can you not see me? I got you guys. I'm good. You guys not hear me? No, we do. We hear you. We hear you. I think it's, I think it's oh, no. you know, he went you there and it, okay. <laughs> we'll come back. You to what? You, dude. We'll come back. Oh. We'll come back to you. Hear me? Check, 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 check. Yeah, yeah, we got you, dude. Sorry, the wind is is fierce today. We have had a, a strong battle with the wind. Right this way. Right at the. All right, we'll come back to him. But windy day in Houston. Noted. Next time we go to Ast or not in Houston at Astros camp. Next time we go to Astros camp, build a wall or inside. <laughs> I love the outside. I, know, I, know I the do wind. too, but you're going to battle the elements. I, I, hope, I hope everyone can battle the elements with us because I love hearing the kids in the background. I love hearing the whack of the ball in the cage. I love seeing guys come out and do their eyewash strolls across the infield, and then you see dudes doing the work in behind them there. that To me, that's spring training, and it's it's so, so fresh. Yeah, it is. It is. I know. We're seeing fans. Windscreen – certain Wi-Fi. I got it. I know. We have wired internet there. Internet was actually down at Astros Camp temporarily and then grinding. They're grinding today. So we're trying. We're trying to hit as many camps as we can. And by the way, for schedule purposes, we are going to Twins Camp, Fort Myers on Thursday to talk to players. So yes, stay sir. tuned on that front. Let's get to our um, daily Oakland A's update. Drama. Did you know where the A's played this weekend? Los Angeles? Los. It's a loss. Los. It was a loss Covina? in multiple ways. Las Vegas. I saw no pub on this. I had no idea. Well, the only pub I see is from, from A's fans that are aggressively all over social media filling us in on what's going on. I saw, I saw a video from the last dive bar posting it on their Twitter, and it was it – was, Tens of fans that were in line. For Fans Fest? Or for fan... They had fan. some type of fan ordeal there. Yeah, it was Fan Fest. First, here's a look at the turnout there for major leaguers playing a baseball game in Vegas. Now, again, I'll continue to reiterate that I do think baseball can succeed in Las Vegas. I do not think this franchise can make that happen. Was first pitch. <laughs> Come on. Come on. They're one of the trolling. fans asking when first pitch was, but it, it did not look packed there by any means. And it's not a big ballpark. I think it fits in the 8,000s. If you include the berm, it's about 10,000. Well, you know, they're not. There's a lot that goes into a business. And even though it's Major League Baseball, it's not Taylor Swift tickets. You need to market, you need to pay for ads on social media, maybe billboards, the whole deal. Yeah, but the city's but you popping have to for baseball. Spend on that. The city's the city is exuberant about baseball. They might not have even known that there were games going on because you have to let people know about this. But they're they, building a brand new stadium in the city. Well, also you can interact with the team account. Uh, no, you can't actually. They've blocked fans from interacting with them on all Ooh. social media accounts. So it's it was ugly. And then yes, they had some type of fan gathering. I'm not going to call it a fan fest because there was a fans fest in. Oakland that had thousands and thousands of people and yeah some people took pictures and it was like a tent with you know 15 people in line so a, a spacious line <laughs> <sighs> stay hot out there stay hot um not out at Vegas it's not Vegas that is the ace that is the ace did you see the news about the Miami Marlins I can't wait it is gonna make a boring stadium absolutely amped Slowly bringing in Japanese, Dominican, Venezuelan baseball, that like feel of bringing instruments in, that is what, that's what makes people want to come back. The game is awesome too. This is an mm -hmm. exciting team last year that won a lot of close games. Bring the fans back with drums. I wonder if they're going to have some kind of, some kind of restrictions, like the Fuvenzola, the Hmm. need those. I know mm -hmm. people are going to say, it's so annoying. 
It's not annoying. It is. I mean, a, it is kind of annoying. It is, but it's, it's cool. An environment. Yes, to have the World Cup feel at games if you can do it. Yes, the World Baseball Classic was crazy. You also need people in the seats, which is a whole other thing. But that will be the difficult. Yes, part. flags, drums, musical instruments are allowed into the ballpark this year for Marlins games, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, AJ, you got us now. We're gonna try again. AJ, Can you hear me? Yeah, we here. got you good. We got you good. Uh, you gonna you gonna be more excited at a Marlins game? Oh, if you've got you know, he never even played winter ball. He knows. No, nope. but they when the drums. I mean, it's gonna be like Oakland. They're gonna have the high school marching band there. Oakland yeah. with the drums was awesome, and you had uh, agreed. Uh, Million percent the agree. Late, yeah, the late John Adams. Was that the no, name no, no. in Cleveland? You know, oh, the drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now know, that no. guy got annoying. Because every time a guy got in a scoring position, you just hear, dun, dun, dun. and there were some games where there was a lot Imagine. of dudes. I don't know how he made it. There was, there was, there was just, there were some years there where there was always somebody in scoring position. Yeah, when they came yeah, up and I... played with Manny and those guys, they were, the guy was beating the drum. And then, you know what they did in Cleveland that was cool, too, besides the drum? The Pac-Man. Da -doom. Or the one up, whatever it is, the, the doo -doo when they score a run. No, the yeah, it was, the, it was the coin from Mario. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that was cool. The noise. That, oh, I love that. That's that's awesome. But yeah. like as an opposing player, if the opposing player hates the drum, especially somebody that played in the division, played hundreds of thousands of games there, then you know what? I want two drums. I want more bands. When you play winter ball, the first inning, the band isn't there. They stroll in probably the bottom half of the first, and they started down the third base line, maybe like even with the left fielder, one of those openings, and just do, 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 do. And like you can feel the crowd start getting hyped. Like I still get chills thinking about it. And then they by the third inning, they work their way back behind home plate, and they're getting it. They're getting it. And there's a guy on that they know is going to steal, or if your catcher is really good – they're like they're like egging them on to steal, and then the steal happens. Ah! And so it's like a constant buildup to different situations, and they know the game. To me, I love it. I want what we saw last week uh, from what was that Old Miss that that clip that we showed. Oh no, from ball Texas five, Tech. Ball five, ball five, or Texas A and M. Texas A and M. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But no, you're right. In in um, in Japan, they have all kinds of cheers that they all do. You get to see it in the WBC, yep. right, where they all stand up and say things in unison. It's cool. It's fun. Japan. Like Japan. The whole the rest of the stadium. So about three quarters of the stadium is very. You know, they sit in their seats and they all sit sit straight ahead and they rarely stand up, but they cheer really. They cheer very loud from foul pole to foul pole. Left field to right field, it is jammed, and they have a they have a they have some kind of chant for each player. We mm -hmm. played Team Samurai there a couple times. They have a chant for each player, and it's not like it's just Tokyo's team. The Giants play. We played in the Giant Stadium in Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter if you were a Giant, if you were a uh, Eagle, if you were uh, SoftBank Hawks. Like you had a chant, and that. And that those fans knew that chant, and it was awesome. Your entire at bat, it was it was so cool. All right, next up, the Philadelphia Phillies need help in their Triple A squad, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, who have a number of alternate hats that all exist somewhere in this studio. <laughs> uh, need a bullpen catcher, so we happen to have two catchers on the show today. Wanted to get your thoughts on any suggestions that you guys have. By the way, that's the ad that they put out there. Who's in the picture? That's Bryce. Isn't that Bryce? That's Bryce. Yeah. That's 100% so it's like, Bryce. I can't hey. really see so good, but it looks like Bryce Harper. They're oh, like, yeah. So, so I can read you a little bit of the job description. This is a real job description from the Phillies baseball ops department. I just think it's a good touch because you got the name and likeness to put Bryce 
in the photo, like, hey, a lot of superstars on this team. If anyone rehabs, you're going to get to probably minor league teams hang out with them. Minor you know league teams saying? love, love that. They play that up. So responsibility, service catcher for Lehigh Valley pre and in game bullpen sessions, warm up pitchers. Oh, no, nah, just went away. Warm up pitchers during games. Staff on daily field schedules and report times. Maintain a hold on. Someone's messing with the thing here for me. <laughs> Maintain a positive and professional demeanor at times while interacting with players, coaches, and staff. Adhere to all team policies and procedures as well as all league regulations and required qualifications. Our college oh, baseball you're experience you're preferred. Oh, who do we got? Wait, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> no, did I get it? No, hey, listen, it's all good. Thanks for stopping by and saying something. I know the the meeting went late. Alice. I know. Alice Brigham. Don't ask so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. He, uh, he, he's he's apologizing because he's running late. Yeah, so I know. He yeah. wanted to wave to everybody and say hi because he said he would come did. on, but then the the union, the Tony Clark and the Players Association is following me around to camps, and they're having these meetings and they're going late. Yeah, but there's an easy negotiation, AJ. It's, hey, cool, so we'll get your first week of the season instead. Oh, do you want me to run in there and grab them and tell them that? No, yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. when you pass them by, that is the, <laughs> tell them. That is the counter right. ask. Every okay. Thursday, right, every first Thursday of the month. Yes. All right, so well, I, that I, interrupts and probably puts an end to my job description reading, as exciting as yeah, it was. I don't I want, want that job. Kratz did that job once for the Iron Pigs. I don't want that job. I did it for a long time for the Iron Pigs, but it is a very <laughs> helpful person. But I also have to say I'm going to take it off of I'm going to take it off of Indeed right now because the assistant coach at my high school he wants that job. So for real, I hope he gets it. Yeah, Jake Bruno. Jake Bruno is he played he played in college and now he's still a college student. He's not playing anymore, but he wants to get into coaching. He will be awesome. All right, so let's make sure that we put this up on social media later yes. and give our personal re recommendation. Anyone that Kratz recommends has my vote. I actually already even talked to the Iron Pigs about it. Oh, so. there you go. But Jake Bruno, the boss. Wasn't Jake he like a radio PA. announcer, Jake Bruno? Wasn't there like a guy on the radio a couple years oh, back? Yeah. Some let's Bruno. Google that, John. Like that, a talk show? It was Frank Bruno. Tony Bruno. Tony Bruno. There you go. Tony Soprano. Yeah. Jake Bruno yeah. radio playlist. 50 songs. I don't think that's the guy you're talking about. Can right, I, uh, yes. I was going to say, I was going to say, can I nominate my son who's 17? Can he do it? Because what do you think? What do you think he'd get more experience out of Kratz? Hanging around a triple A team, catching bullpens or going to play summer ball all summer? Oh my gosh. If he would catch bullpens. That would be if, – if they would let him catch bullpens and understand how to, like, go around a professional day for an entire summer, let him hit BP, he would get way more out of it than playing summer ball. 100%. Catching dudes throwing 95 – that's the thing. I get it. AAA is not as good as big leagues. There are some arms that are electric. And you have some dim lighting in those minor league bullpens. Woof. And it's, oh, it's yeah. hard work, too, because you're there early and you stay till the end of the game. All right, so Bruno's got competition. Bruno versus Krasinski. Let's get to your BetMGM pitchers picks today. And we are looking at awards in the National League. So we'll run through MVP, Cy Young, and Rookie of the Year. Let us start with MVP. Ronald Acuna Jr. is the favorite, plus 525. Mookie's at plus 650. If you play shortstop all year, that helps his cause if he does it well. Shohei Otani at plus 900. Fernando Tatis Jr. is fourth wow. on this list at plus 1,000. And then Freddie Freeman at plus 1,100. I can give you the next four. Harper, Olsen, Carroll, and Trey Turner. And yeah, I, you can give me your pick. But also, yeah, you can tell me how you'd want to potentially distribute money. Like for me, I like a Corbin Carroll look. I like maybe putting a little bit of my funds his way. Because I think he could take another step, and I think he could steal more bags. I think there's more pop in the bat. A full season in year number two, you know, I think it's possible for someone like that to win an MVP for a team that is going to be playoff relevant or should be. And that's good value. Plus 2,000 for Corbin Carroll. What are you, 
sitting there simmering, thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about your Corbin Carroll. The team has to do really well. Yeah, but the Diamondbacks are going to be in contention, so that's a good potential pick. Do you think there's any chance, AJ, that Mookie, Otani, and Freddie cause problems for voters and it starts to distribute? I think, I, I think, I think you take Otani out because he's not pitching this year. Yep. I think Mookie playing shortstop, how, depending on how long he plays, I think that's going to affect him. You can say it's not going to affect him, but it's going to affect him a little bit because defensively, he's, I mean, listen – it's people say, oh, separate offense from defense. But when you get moved to a premium position like shortstop, not that second baseman isn't mm-hmm. isn't difficult, but shortstop's a whole different animal. Like we talked about with Jeremy Pena, um, Tatis. I think he. Ah, I mean, I like the Corbin Carroll pick. I, there's always somebody that kind of comes out of nowhere too. That's like shoots up the rankings. If Acuna is healthy and he goes 40, 60 again, it, it's tough to take that award away from him. I don't think Acuna is going to go 40-60. He might go 40-40. My, my two picks, and I know I have to pick one, I think it's me to battle of the first baseman this year. I think Freddie is going to take the next step to be a two-time MVP, and then we start talking about two-time MVPs that aren't Hall of Famers yet, that kind of stuff, and Bryce Harper. I think there is a window with the pitching staff for the Phillies to get them off to a hot start and that hot start offensively will be led by Bryce Harper. And I think his move to first base a year after rehabbing from Tommy John, I just, I love, I love the Papelbon style plus four, plus four numbers behind the plus. I like taking it. I don't think Shohei, this is the year just because he would have to do historic like 60, 65 homers to do it. I think Freddie is going to rise above and be a 320, 130 RBIs, 30 homers, 35. He wants to not strike out 100 times. Like that's his goal as an elite player. That's what he wants to do this year. So I feel like Freddie or Bryce, Bryce will know in the first month if he's going to be the MVP or not. Because the Phillies are hot, he's going to be the reason and I think Trey Turner is going to be back to the hot start that he or the hot second half that he had or hot last 40 games that he had. And it will take pressure off of him and it will give him more opportunities to drive run. Everett said, I'll go with Ballinger. I don't think that's a bad pick at all. If Cody looks like he did last year or even a little take bit your better, shirt, and take he's your shirt off. It before, and he's mm. going to provide the defense and the base running. No, I mean, because he's on a contract Voters year? Are, well, it's not just the contract year. I think he's capable of a six or seven win season. It's it's possible in the National League. He's done even it. a little bit more. He's you know, done it already. Seven or eight win season. Yeah, I mean, he's won an MVP. I, just I know he's a different player from I, that time period, and the swing is, is mechanically so inconsistent, but it was really good last year for a good chunk of the season. I got to look at guys that are 1,000 OPS guys. Okay. And I think we're a few years removed that from Cody. Doesn't mean he's not a good player. I just don't see him in that consistent upper echelon. You look at a guy like Freddie, he's got a OPS in his career over 900. Harper. Like, and I think Harper, Harper's technically in his prime. Like, these are the years. Like, I could see, I could see a two or three year period where he gets one or two more mm-hmm. MVPs which is crazy, which is crazy to think how great that contract is for the Phillies if that happens. Okay. It's, it's not an easy call, though. It's not like we're just looking going, No, no. This... Know, okay, rookie of the year should be on the moto if he's healthy. But let's do Cy Young. Spencer Strider at plus 525. Zach Wheeler's at plus 900. Logan Webb, who finished in second last year, is at plus 1,000. Yamamoto plus 1,300. Then you have Max Fried and Zach Allen that are both equal at plus 1,400. Um, next three after that are Kyle Harris and Paul <laughs> Skeens. Or no, sorry, I'm, that's on rookie. Next yeah. uh, next three after that are Justin Steele, Tyler Glass now, and Aaron Nola. I'm doubling down. On? Max Fried. I said Max Fried last year. Mm-hmm. I'm saying Max Fried this wow. year. Wow. Okay. Because ha, I love that 14, plus 1,400, but... I also love him in a 
contract year. And when we, when we talked to him out in Vegas earlier this year, when he was on the show, like, I don't know. I just feel like he's, he's a guy, like he's a guy that just wants to go out there and make all 32 of his starts. And that's the problem is, you know, he's had some injuries. That's yeah. what makes you hesitate. I is get he it, capable but it's a contract of running here. a sigh? Yeah. But what does that mean? I mean, he, it means like you, you don't try means, as hard if no, it's not no, your no, contract no, no, no. here. I mean, no, I think you can maybe pitch through something different that, Hey, you know what? I got to make sure I'm ready for, for the postseason. So I won't pitch through the, you know, I, I'm not saying this specifically about Max Fried. I'm just saying it about in general, players can find another gear in a contract year and dudes that have that it factor. I think they find it in that contract year. Who's your pick, AJ? I like Zach Allen. I, I think Yamamoto's not going to get enough starts. They're going to give him rest. Logan Webb, yeah. Wheeler, no, because he's not. He he has a, too many. Every once in a while, he has just a blow up start. Strider, same thing. I think Gallon is consistent. I think the Diamondbacks have some attention now, and he's finished in the top, you know, two or three the last few years. So I, I like where Zach Gallon's at. And I think he's a good choice at fourteen hundred. All right, I agreed. I like Freed. If he stays healthy, certainly capable. I mean, even last year, that's a two and a half ERA. I mean, if he's normal, uh, Max Freed, the, the ERA is often in the twos, right? The last two <laughs> years, it's, it's mid twos. So if he puts a full season together, yes, very capable. I know he's two here, so it's not like you're saying don't sleep on him, but I think Zach Wheeler has a shot at winning the Cy Young Award this year. Maybe he pitches too much. How many innings? They meaning, let meaning, meaning they let him. They let him out there, and his ERA might be a three-one. Yeah, but there's a balance. Like if he just destroys number two on that list in innings pitched, right? There is still a chance. It's not like you're getting dinged. You are getting dinged for the innings if you're giving up runs. But obviously, there is still a ton of value, and I think that'll continue to be the case as innings become more rare from starters racking up two hundred plus. So I think Wheeler's just I'm still getting out better. There. That's That's great. Sometimes they leave him out there a little bit too long and he might give up some runs later in a game that other guys don't. He wants it. He wants yeah, he it. He wants it, which is great. Him and Nola both. They both want to be out there. But sometimes, you know, oh, let's leave him out there and he give, a guy gets on first and the guy comes in and, you know, lights the Cast fire and it. gives up a run. You know, yep. it, it, yep. this stuff happens. Yep. I, I just think, you know, the sweeper got better as the year went on. Wheeler's working on another new pitch. Like he is always working on full shower and do the whole deal. Something to think about. While Lance gets set up, let's kick it back to us for a sec and tell you about the bet five get one fifty offer um, from M- BetMGM. Place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the app of at least five dollars. You'll receive one hundred fifty bucks instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome. There's the bonus code for you. It's there all year and all last year as well, running for two years. Foul. F O U L. Um, and also, of course, in North Carolina, the uh, sports book app is now open and running. Today is the day. So, congratulations for more details there. Um, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But uh, if you're in the state of North Carolina, you can use that code as well. And it's $200 in bonus bets. The code is FOUL, F O U L. Gambling problem or concern? Call 01 800 Gambler. North Carolina, go ahead and raise up. Put your shirt off right around like a helicopter. Is that? That's a song. Oh, I was going to say, is that a Durham Bulls thing? No, no, that's a song. Okay. I forget. Petey Petey Pablo? I don't know. Maybe Lance McCullers knows. We'll get to him in just a sec. Um, Lance McCullers will join us from Astros Camp with AJ. We're good. All right, let's go back out. Uh, Joining us for the first time on this show, Lance McCullers Jr. How you doing, Lance? Good to see you, dude. What's up, guys? What's up? How you doing, okay, so man? I just, I just have to say this before we get too deep into this interview. Okay. He was he walked by earlier, and he had like I don't know, he had a green shirt on. This is a green shirt. It was green shirt. For... He had the hair perfectly done, right? And he was with some fans, and he walked by, and I was like, man, who is that fella right there? And I only saw the back of him go by, and then he came back, and I was like, okay, all right, I, I get it. He's he's a nice looking fella. He's got a in good shape i was like and then he goes i want to change my shirt and i was thinking like i'll oh, just keep that one on scott will be kind of jealous he's 
No, it's too, it's too tight. It's too tight for interviews. Yeah, that's a workout shirt. In the morning, we get here early, you know, got rehab. We don't want to, you know, get tight shirts inside, but we don't want to be blown up on social. Well, let's, let's get that stuff out of the way. Well, let's get that out of the way first. How you feeling, dude? Good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'm, I'm starting to stretch it out a little bit. I'm getting back to 105, 120 feet. Uh, tomorrow is actually my first back-to-back uh, throwing day. So breaking news, uh, back-to-back throwing days tomorrow. But um, I'm really feeling good. You know, we have a really, really great group here. Um, Jeremiah Randall is our head guy. Um, does a phenomenal job. Um, really, you know, really listens to the players and, you know, we kind of understands the whole process mentally and physically, kind of the whole thing. It's not, it's not my first rehab, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, so far everything's going great. Um, you know, really couldn't ask for, uh, you know, a better rehab to this point. Tell Jeremiah, you, he shouldn't have hurt you. He's been there since, since I right? was there. Like, what's the deal with that? Like, you, you can't be, you can't be just giving them so much kudos here and be like, actually, you're the one that hurt me. Let's get a little more prehab before Jeremiah, right? Yeah. Well, when Jeremiah showed up, I, um, my elbow issues were already starting to unfold. So, um, you know, he, he, he helped me get back from my first TJ, which was a very, very long rehab. Uh, I had it in the off season, so I had to miss the full season. Then we went into the to the next spring training, and then it was COVID. So um, Jeremiah and I have been through a, through a lot of up and downs together. So, no, a lot, a lot of credit to him and um, the, whole, the whole staff here. Uh, maybe a little bit more prehab on, on my part when I'm healthy. Tough, tougher rehab, one or two? This has been a tougher rehab. This has been a tougher rehab because um, I got hurt in the ALDS in 21, and I probably should have just had surgery. Um, but then we had the lockout, and there was just so much. It was a very weird time. Then I rehabbed it all 22, and then re-injured myself in the offseason of 22, tried to rehab again, and then just ended up by getting surgery. So this is my same exact rehab for the third time. So this has been a, this has been a tough one, plus mixing a, a surgery in there. So this is, this one's kind of sucked. The- I got a good old scar. I got the – I got the Look double. That muscle, that I got forward. the double. Look at that. You would think you would think I wouldn't get hurt, but damn, <laughs> double scar. Lance, when you were when you were, uh, I want to get to your timetable too. But when you were, you weren't a rookie when I played with you. But the guys who Kinda were though. there, the the guys who were there, no, it, it was your rookie year. Sixteen. No, it was my second year. That was your second year. Okay, but like Fellman and Gregerson, they were there. They used to call you Wagyu. Do you feel yeah, they like, like to make, they like to they like to poke fun at me a little bit? Those guys. I'm not really sure where that came from, but they, they had a bone to pick with me a lot. That was what they called you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, they used to they used to pick on you. He's so a now prime piece of beef. I guess because yeah, he's because he's a piece of beef. He was he was a he was a high end piece of beef. So what are you are you that kind of veteran now, or are you like no? I hated that when they did that. I want to take it a different route. Um, I didn't, I didn't love it. I mean, they, they were good guys though. And they were good teammates. Oh, Actually yeah. Feldman and I, uh, Feldman and I came a long way over our, over our couple years together. Ended up being a really great friend. I actually saw him in Houston not too long ago. Um, but no, man here, you know, it's really, it's really kind of about just, just show up. And if you do your stuff and you're, you, you work hard, man, and you go out there and put it all on the field, then there's not, there's not too much, um, that you can do wrong here. And plus there's a, whole lot of new age. I was kind of caught in between. I was, I was on the forefront of, of kind of let the kids play type of thing, but I was also still there and, you know, there was a lot of unwritten rules to follow and you want to be very respectful. And, um, I did my fair share of, uh, of rookie pranks, um, fair share of rookie (laughs) duties that, that we don't really have, have the, have the, I guess the freedom nor the, the want to do anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, one more, and then we'll move on to some other topics. Uh, timetable, because a lot of the fans were asking, do you have something in, in your head for a specific date that you circle? I know some guys don't like to kind of put a date down, but what are you thinking? I'm okay. You know, I have a goal. I had surgery in June. It was June 13th of last year. Going into surgery, it was looking like a six- to eight-month recovery, but the, the my elbow was more – uh, more banged up than they had thought. So then when I came out of surgery, I don't really remember it, but apparently I was upset because um, I was being told 13 to 15 months. So I'm, I'm trying to aim for that 13 month timeline. You know, I had surgery in June, get out for rehab sometime. And, you know, like if I could get out for rehab at some time in late June, early July, that'd be a big W for me. Um, rehab is always a little bit up in the air. Do I get three starts, four starts, five starts? You got the 
the days in between. Uh, minor leagues have an off day now every single Monday, I believe. So, you know, you get out for rehab, you're looking at another probably 25-ish days. So, um, you know, I've kind of put a, a goal late July, early August, somewhere in that timeline. But I don't have a whole lot of room left in my elbow for holes. So <laughs> I got to um, I got to take this one, you know, as slowly as I can, but also, um, you know, kind of push up with, with some aggression and just, you know, try to do it smart. What? Will you change anything when you come back? You like, know, so you change, I mean, whether it's pitch selection, pitch, do you tinker with grips? Because I'm sure, you know, you, you're up on stuff. Like, I mean, you sat down and goes, man, did you hear about Cole? Like, I was like, whoa, man, that just happened. But like, you know, you saw the thing probably the other day about the athletic Meister in uh, Texas was talking about the grips and the, the loading of the arm. So will you change anything? Because I mean, everyone, you know, you have that curveball, breaking ball, right? Combo yeah. that you throw. So do you think you'll change pitch selection? Are you going to work on a grip to change mechanic wise? I don't know. You know, I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on my lower body working really well with my upper. I think in the past I've, I've had a little bit of, uh, of, I would say dysfunction, I guess, or a little bit of, you know, they're, they don't really work in unison per se. So I changed the way that I'm, I'm kind of breaking my hands. Not so much. I'm not really focusing on arm swing. That, that was a big topic years ago, short arm, long arm type of thing for me i'm trying to work on being on time it's still hard because i'm in flat ground and I, I have a velocity limit right so right now throwing at 105 feet at 80 miles an hour um everything can look great but as soon as you get on the mound things can things can start getting a little weird so for me i just want to be on time i want to be um be able to be you know i want to be able to repeat um and i would love to be able to you know establish you know my the thing with the fastball my off speed is you know just it comes my, my off speed comes naturally to me. It, it, I feel like very comfortable throwing it. But you did throw um, what forty seven in a row that one game? No, nah, it was a lot in a row. <laughs> it was in the twenties, but it just it's always come natural to me. I don't know why. So I I, I lean that way because it's comfort. Um, so you know I, I would like to try to establish the fastball a little bit more. Um, maybe work on a, another pitch or two that's a little bit harder in the zone where I can you know stay away from the off speed as much. But that's a great weapon for me, so I can't just get rid of it. Um, I wouldn't really know how to pitch without it. Can you come back with more velocity? Because so many guys have velocity now, and you would say, eh, you know what? I don't really need my velocity. Can you come back with more velocity after all that you've been through? I don't think so. No, I don't think more velocity is on the table. Um, you know, back in, in 15, 16, before my first really bad elbow injury, you know, I could get up to 98, 99. Um, after my elbow injury, I, I was maybe getting up to 97, but really comfortable, like in the 94, 95, 96 range. Um, I feel like I have a better understanding of how to pitch now as I've gotten a little older. Um, I feel like if, you know, I could, you know, kind of mix and match some stuff. So if I could get back into that comfortable 93 to 95 range, I think that would be really good. When I came back in 22, I was really like 90 to 93. It was a, it was a struggle for me um, to, to grab that velocity. Uh, so, you know, that would be a mid, getting back into the mid nineties, maybe back where I was in 21 would, would, uh, would be ideal for me. Let's get, let's, let's talk about something a little more fun here. All right. So you guys are playing the Tigers. You're not, but the Astros are playing the Tigers. They're going out there. Yeah. Clearly, you know who the manager of the Tigers AJ, is. AJ. Oh yeah. Every time you see him, do you say, Hey, Skip, thanks for starting me game seven of the world series. No, I, I never thank him. Um, I sh maybe I should have thanked him. I, I have a really good relationship with AJ, man. I loved AJ a lot. Do you know why he started you in game seven? Has he ever probably you? really the only option, honestly, probably. The only well, option. Morton finished, right? Morton <laughs> piggybacked you. Do you know that we flipped it in the ALCS? Yes. Morton started and I finished that game. But Do you know why? Has he ever told you? No. Okay. I'm, I, I, no. I, don't know, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell it. So he said, he told us one time we were doing a series of yours and he said, yeah, Morton started game seven and it was really because I wanted Lance to come in and, and, and you know, throw his curveballs, it was a better matchup. And then he said, the reason I flip-flopped him in Game 7 of the World Series is he wanted you to get in a bat. Well, there you go. Didn't did, you get I a hit in that game? RBI. No, not a hit. You not got an hit. RBI, got right? An RBI. You came up and got an RBI. I got Brian McCannon from third, so That's it was right. basically a double. We'll check the stats. He told he – but Brian McCann, you. no, no, I tell you, Brian McCann was at third base. Josh Reddick had come up the at bat before with no outs, grounded out to second. McCann held. I came up. Darvish threw me a heater that I was a billion years late on. Um, then he threw me a slider, and I didn't really see it too well. And I somehow got the pine tar of the bat onto the ball, and it trickled the second, and it gave McCann enough time to get in. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, so AJ said, 
But he told but basically I, a double because McCann got yeah, it on third. That's true. So yeah, he said <laughs> yeah. he actually told us that he started you that game because he said Lance is going to get an at bat somewhere and have to do something, and you did. And you there we go. The in, so yeah, there we I go. I mean, that's that's pretty good managing there, Kratzy. If you can Big think time. that far ahead, I thought I was just the only option. No, no, no. <laughs> you were the better man in that situation. Hey, since you since you know so many people in this game now, most of your teammates from when you first got called up are now elsewhere. We kind yep. of talked about this, trying to get you on this show and your elbow injury. Do you think, and you even talked about like, oh, let the kids play kind of thing. You think you could be the forefront? You could be a at the point in your career now where you could kind of sell the game more in, in a way that other sports sell the game? Um, can you, can we clarify on that so I can give a good response for the viewers? Like, could you, yeah, I was kind of everywhere on that. Could you be somebody who is still a big voice in this game because of what you've accomplished and what you've gone through and the teams you've been on and all the friends and connections that you have? Can you be a voice in this game? And you're not first few years in the bigs, you know? Right. So, yeah. Like, I mean, I think, your thing. I, I think a lot of guys in, in today's game, honestly, man, for me specifically, I mean, I don't know how, how, how much people want to hear from a, you know, a pitcher from the Houston Astros that's, you know, on and off the DL. But I mean, for me, the, the, the guys in this game right now, like you see the podcasts that are being done and like Mookie Betts has a podcast, um, you know, you guys are doing it and, you know, getting, you know, kind of getting players on, getting them out of their comfort zone. So I think more of that stuff, I think the, the fans kind of connecting to the players, um, you know, and, and kind of other realm than just baseball, I think is really great. I mean, there's so many guys in our clubhouse, like I, you know, Altuve, you know, Bregman, you know, has kind of put himself out there. You know, I think obviously we went through a tough time years ago um, with the cheating scandal. And I think that is, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe shelled some guys up per se. And, you know, I think some guys really just wanted to, you know, focus on, you know, kind of their careers, you know, and, and things of that nature. I, you know, I have two young daughters now. So I think, you know, life maybe at this point, um, you know, just kind of gets in the way, but I'm involved in the union. I'm on our subcommittee board. I think I'm very passionate about that. Um, we had our, we had our PA meeting today. So I think I'll always be involved in the game in some capacity and, and really more for me, player to player. Can you tell them stop following me around every camp? Who's fault? Fo they're following the PA, around? every, every camp we show up and they're there. They just want you to work, come in the clubhouse I and mean, say hello. Apparently, apparently. I mean, Tony Clark, he's like, I'm sick of seeing you. I'm like, well, you're following <laughs> me around. We'll get the schedule. Uh, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Kratzy right. leaked in the schedule. Yeah, oh, 100%. Kratzy's like, oh, watch this. I'm, I'm up in Pennsylvania while this guy's down here just getting baked in the sun. So, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. dude, it's 40 degrees oh, out today. Don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm from Orlando. You're from Tampa. Yep. Right? You're, you signed where to go to college? University of Florida. Go Gators. Um, go hopefully Gator. you're, you're, you're raising your daughters to be Gator fans, correct? Um, Sure. Sure. We're, yeah. Okay. That I mean we haven't really breached that age yet. One, okay. One's four and one's ten weeks old. That's so never and, too early. And, and Ava really see only never knows too. only knows Houston a lot and knows that Florida she goes to the beach. So, oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, don't. It's never too early to start them. I'm a Gator fan. I've been a season ticket holder for a long time. So anytime I get a chance to talk to a Florida, I'm sure they will. Both yeah. my grandfathers went to Florida too. Okay. So, so and then Tuck. Tuck signed Tuck to Florida to go. too, right? Yep. Then you got Bregman who went to the other school, LSU. Bregman went to LSU. So was there a little trash talking last year in Omaha? No, I didn't. I didn't go. You know, I didn't. I, Tucker, neither Tucker nor I, nor uh, I actually went. Still, so you still give it to him a little bit. But then LSU won, so I'm sure he was on cloud nine. Yeah. No, I, Breggy doesn't really. I mean, really, you guys should. I wish that Netflix was here to follow Bregman around. He should just have his own part of the show on how like this guy just. I mean. During the year, it's how locked in he is. To baseball. Just baseball, good or bad. I mean, you know, we all go through our struggles and, you know, ups and downs and good and bad. But no matter what, uh, man, Breggy's uh, – I hear stories about Hunter Pence and how, like, no matter good or bad, he still go to the cage after the game or show up and put his pants on. I feel like Breggy's got a lot of uh, a lot of from, a lot of those stories in him. Well, explain, because I want to hear more now because I'm, I'm interested in, like, how you can be more locked in than, like, another guy. Like, I don't think more locked in. I mean, I just think that Bregman is just one of those guys where it's like – it's, it's all encompassing, you know, he's just all in. So yeah. when the season's on, it's on. Even his wife is like, don't, don't talk. He'll, he'll just, I don't like, know. Don't talk to me. I mean, Reagan seems all in for it too. So, I mean, they're, they're a big baseball so you think family. he goes home and talks to her and he's like, what do you think of my, bat? I think so for sure. There's no doubt. <laughs> There's zero doubt in my mind. He's watching film at the kitchen table that 
he's probably talking with his chef or whomever else, you know, oh about his swing. And uh, oh. yeah, there's no doubt in my mind about that. That's the, that, that's the best because, I mean, I used to go home and that was like decompressed zone when you're home, especially once you have kids, you know, when you have kids and you get home and it's, it's kitty time. Right? I think he gets home and just starts playing baseball with Knox. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, he, and he, no, he makes Knox throw to him. So, he yeah, can he work makes on Knox throw thing. to him. Knox can be a pitcher. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> with, with the short bat. I like yeah. that. Hey, I, cool. while you're on the topic, I have a college baseball question for you, Lance. What do you okay. think of them limiting players on bat flips and celebrations and all that? A couple clips have already gone viral of like player doing what I would say is kind of a mid bat flip, like mm-hmm. nice, but nothing crazy, and then getting booted from the game. I'm like, whoever's in charge of that in my opinion has it all wrong and they're hurting the sport as a whole i didn't see that um i i I don't think it's great i think that's uh i think that's that's not good i mean for me as long as i kind of feel this way about it as long as it's more you know kind of geared towards just like the emotion of the game and you know your team and the fans and things like that then i'm then, then i think it's all great and I did see a lot of those umpires kind of coming out before this, I guess, this new rule that has just popped up and telling guys to run and, and things like that. I don't think if there's if there's not big, big time problems coming coming out of it, you know, then then they should just kind of let it be. But like any big corporation or organization and, you know, they like rules and they like controlling people. So I'm sure they're going to um, they're going to you know try to uh, have the last laugh there. But you probably, to, probably no good. You have to understand Scott went to Miami. And a okay. Florida guy hit a homer off the Miami guy and uh, did it, and he got ejected. And so Scott's a little bitter towards this. I saw guy. one of the guys get ejected last year for celebrating a strikeout. Yeah, that was another Gator guy. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. another Gator guy. I saw that <laughs> one too. Yeah, and they're just picking Obviously, up Gator that guys. was. Yeah. Yeah, that that was total fake bad news. Role. I want I want all of the showmanship. And yes, I agree. Yes. Right. Oh, I'm, bad role. Bad, don't terrible don't role. chuck your bat towards the other dugout. But like the the one yeah. that we showed last week that went viral was like so pedestrian just like oh nice he carried it like a little longer and then flipped it nicely after like a what a grand slam was it aj game time yeah it was like to tie the game yeah yeah and i just looked into it after that because i didn't realize how many restrictions were being put on by the ncaa um because i was like oh screw this ump and then i was like no wait it's not the ump it's ncaa actually creating more restrictions on on celebrations i'm like imagine imagine a league doing something like that no way (laughs) <laughs> but, imagine bad roles being put in place exactly, exactly. without anybody see, else no one having a say in it players especially yeah. but that, that's a whole different topic on that field right over there to our left yep did you see what happened a couple nights ago lance lynn, i know you weren't here because they were I playing the national I, I know you weren't here lance lynn got ejected by i'll let you guess the umpire i did hear about that yeah angel ejected yeah exactly yeah. I did, yeah. Lance is in mid-season form. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then did you hear he went to the outfield to try to throw? And that, that was and the then they ejected too. him again. Double ejection. Yeah, so they ejected him from the bullpen because he was throwing his – he didn't get his – Finish it up. Of yeah. course. So, Angel mid-season form, ready to go? Hey, yeah. They're both They're both ready. <laughs> they're both ready. For, it's right about now. Right about the 11th, 12th of, uh, of March where, where things get a little dicey in spring. Guys are starting to turn on a little bit. People are starting to get tired of waking up at 6.00. Uh, bad attitudes are starting to show up. Guys, guys want to get home. Guys want the season to start. So that's about right. That's about right. Hey, last one from me, Lance. Right now, number one on the power rankings list of top rival of the Houston Astros is our number one rival. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that the list may say the Rangers. Um, or the Yankees, it's got to be, it's got to be the Rangers or the Yankees, or maybe I guess the Dodgers could be on there. All, all could, all could be top for uh, top. All could push for number one. Okay, guess who so they open up with this year? Guess who they open up with this you year? They open up with the Yankees. the Yankees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I think, I mean, the Rangers, I mean, they beat us last year in the ALCS. They won the world series. There's a lot of history there with us, with the Yankees. So I'd, I'd probably say one of those two is ranked number one. Who is it? No, he, he wanted to oh, no, That was my question. My question was, was like, oh, no, 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 no. We wanted to know you. I probably say, um, I probably say the 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 Yankees. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yankees. All right. So okay. before, before we let you go, we had Justin on here, and he was talking about his Tommy John, and then yep. you you've had two, obviously. And you you mentioned we talked about Garrett Cole before you came on. He's going to have an MRI. I saw that. Yeah. What what what's the feeling inside when the trainer says you got to go have an MRI? Is it pit drop stomach? You're like, oh. no, I think. I mean, I I I knew when I needed an MRI. 
So I'm, I'm sure Garrett, you know, Garrett kind of has an idea. Garrett's a super in tune with his, with his body. He has the, one of the most unbelievable abilities I've ever seen to kind of control his body. And, and, um, Garrett is a really good dude, man. Like one of the best, no, he is. he's so one of the best. And I, I, I really hope that the news comes out positive. Um, but man, he's, he's done some amazing things in this game and, uh, did some amazing things for us and is a hell of a cook too. That better, better pitcher Verlander or Cole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that Verlander has had the most, one of the most amazing careers ever. Okay. Um, I would, <laughs> yes, I would argue, he and he, he's going to, he's going to probably punch me. We're locker mates. I, w- I would argue the most dominant I've ever seen someone though was 2019 Garrett Cole. True. I've never seen someone um, pitching that was so dominant. That's because you never had to face like Verlander back in like 2007. Maybe not. Yeah. What year did he already win the MVP? 2011. No. Yeah. Back 11. I was yeah, in his 11. division. We faced yeah. him six times a year. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just <laughs> saying from being in a dugout, the most dominant pitcher I've ever seen step on a field was 2019 Garrett Cole. Um, but the career that Justin's had, and for me, the way that he's carried it and then how he's carrying it through the end of his career, I mean, he's 41. Oh, yeah. um, I, I don't know where I'll be at 41, but I promise you it won't be competing for Cy Youngs. <laughs> well, that was going to be my question. The most dominant pitcher you've ever played with. So now I'm going to hit the most dominant position player you ever played with in all these years that you've been in the big leagues. Oh, man. The most dominant position player. I've obviously, obviously a lot come to mind, but I've when George Springer, when George Springer would get like on conscious hot, I've really never seen a guy be able to take over um, a game like George, whether it was the outfield or whether it's his ability to hit for power at the top of the lineup, his speed. And then in the postseason, it's it's a tie between Altuve and Correa. I've, I've really never seen the way Carlos, the way Altuve shows up in the postseason, the way that Carlos demands perfection from his team during during those big times is is pretty special were you there last year when, were you in the series last year when you guys played Korea in the I times? was watching yeah, I was in dugout were you, were you screaming at him like it's not your time no it's no not Korea time no 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 I would never <laughs> stop no way you would never you Come would never on. trash talk your ex-teammates no 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 I would trash talk them but I wouldn't I wouldn't yell about the whole no time thing oh okay. yeah that was his whole thing right it's Korea time I'm worried yeah, so what do you yeah, what do you yell well. at him what do you yell at him when you're when you're out there when you're, when you're back talking your your ex ex teammates, what do you what are you hollering out there? Um, I don't know. I I haven't I haven't trash talked Carlos yet. Um, I haven't faced him though in a game. Um, I don't know. I mean, Carlos um, Carlos's oldest son's my godson, so we gotta we got uh, we gotta toe the line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have a line. That's it's fair. PG trash talk. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Lance, great to see you, dude. Thanks for swinging by. Um, good luck in the recovery process, obviously. Um, we're rooting for you. Can't wait to see you back on the big league mound, and hopefully we'll grab you again soon, all right? All right, guys. It was great seeing you. Thank you. Lance McCullers Jr. with us from Astros Camp, and we'll get back to AJ in just a second. Let's go right to some other news that we learned today, and also to let everyone know if you want to backtrack on – you know, the Yankee injuries, like Judge being just off for a day or two, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But the Cole stuff that we talked about a few times, the MRI, that could be a deal. Just backtrack on the show. Once we're done, we'll be done in a few. Let's go to the Soul Series pitching matchups. Next week, regular season, Major League Baseball. Game one, Tyler Glass now versus Yu Darvish. Game two, Yoshinobu Yamamoto versus Joe Musgrove. Dodgers, Padres, and the games count in Seoul, South Korea. And FT will have post-game shows after those games, bright and early weekday mornings. It'll be like, what, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, and we will be there for a little FT post-game action. So can't wait. I'll but, set my alarm right now. Yes, please do. Well, you're fine. You're up early. I'm the problem. But For you. I was setting my alarm for you. Thank That's you. what you... <laughs> Thank you. I will. Uh, you surprised will be... that Glassnow's getting it? Um, over Yamamoto. You thought Yamamoto first, and then Glassnow too. Just, just cause. <sighs> He's never pitched in the bigs, right? Let him you go. Don't game have two. A larger hyped pitching prospect than this, right? But your the game one is hyped as hell anyway, and then game two you go. Or, or are they doing the Kratz mitigation process? Which is? If you think your best pitcher 
should face the other team's best pitcher. They're all going to get about the same amount of starts. Why not throw them in game two? Guarantee yourself. Guarantee yourself a victory. AJ, what do you think of the Soul Series rotation that was just announced? And I know you're just back with us. Do you want me to let you know? Or you? Saw no, I, heard, I heard you guys. I just want to say okay. this for the record. Uh, someone someone said that on the show that Yamamoto would pitch game two and they would start Tyler Glass now game one. I'm not sure who it was, but I think he's a Wagyu piece of beef sitting in this foul territory shirt on your screen. I don't know, but I feel like I uh, yeah. Because they don't know they who it is. Game. What's that? Don't know who that is. Next next uh, comment. Okay. Well, anyways, I said it. And besides that, uh, I said that they would want him to watch a game because they don't want him to run out there his first time in a major league game and not even get to watch one or see one. Plus, game two, he still can pitch the first game back in the States. It's not like the, you know they have a break in between so they can realign it if they want. So I, I think this is the right call for the Dodgers. Who was pitching game two for the Padres? Musgrove? It's not like, yes. he's, a, some, it's not like he's some scrub off the street. I mean, that's pretty good. So, you know. We're no hitter. And, yeah, Gratz is, Gratz is saying, oh, you know, get to face, you know, game two, guarantee a win. Listen, Joe Musgrove's pretty damn good, too. And that's a pretty good one-two punch the Padres still have in Darvish and Musgrove. Mm-hmm. Also, I mean, injury bugs hitting the Dodgers a little bit early on, too. Emmett Sheehan starting the season on the injured list. Um, Bruce Dahl Gratterall is not making the trip. They're hoping he'll be ready for uh, opening day stateside. But... You know, you, you guys were more vocal about this than I was, that the Dodgers pitching depth could be, you know, the problem for them, right? Like for every team, especially at one like the Dodgers, you're looking at a super team. There's there's still something that you can point out, and that could be the issue, right? 100%. That's their, okay. that's their one weak spot for me is they're, they're pitching, not only starting, but their whole staff. Yeah, just – yeah, long – longevity or, or ability to stay healthy, getting enough innings out of your starting rotation. Mm -hmm. And right, maybe the left side of their infield now. Well, and if you want more on range, that, range we factor. covered that right at the top of the show, too, on Mookie Betts taking over at shortstop. <laughs> Let's uh, slap hands. All right, let's hit Kratats first. What do you got for us? Well, I figured it was so windy out there, and it's so windy here. Might as well go with the Omaha Storm Chasers. AJ's going to have a tough time with the sun. You'll see it. Cool little patch Omaha. on the side that they played with the whole the whole summer because they were having the AAA All-Star game there. But a little rehab hat for me. I will go C. Hmm. It's a nice logo. I don't love the color for some reason. AJ, royal blue. I'll go Man. see because I'm like John Cena. I can't see it. <laughs> you can't see Kratz hats. Yeah, just just trust me on that. Um, and lastly, just to announce to everyone, we have a new FT host joining us tomorrow. We'll make a number of announcements coming up over the next few weeks on FT, but we have a new host joining us for tomorrow's show. So. AJ, I think you're back next week, right? Is yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm, go I'm going into uh, the Navy for the rest of the week. So uh, if you need me, don't call me because I'll be out somewhere in Coronado joining the Navy. He'll be going port to port on one of those ships. You could never fit in a ship. If I've been in a submarine. They are small, and I've been on ships, and they are small. With your broad shoulders, you you just after a little while, you you just stay on land. Be more be more of a seal than a than a shipman. Well, I'm going to be a seal and a shipman at the same time in the next few days. So Can if I don't come back, pictures? because I'll, I'll see if they let me. But if when I come back, you know, if I'm talking different, acting differently, it means I'm a team member. And uh, watch out. You 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 wouldn't make it through one day of buds. Not why one. not? Why not? I love water. You're complaining about the wind and the sun in your home state. Well, that's because I'm on TV, but if I'm, when I need to go, I can go. Trust me. Uh, uh, we will have Beep joining us as a new FT host with Kratz and me tomorrow. Uh, Ken back with us tomorrow. Twins camp on Thursday. And happy birthday, Rich Hill, who is 57. I'm kidding, Rich. 
43. 43. And he'll probably sign with the team in June. See everyone on Tuesday, except for AJ. Good luck in the Navy, dude. We hope to see you on Monday. In the Navy. What's the song? In the Navy. Yep. <laughs> Is that a village people, right? I don't know. Is that the YMCA people? <laughs> the <city> people. <laughs>